this this year can can slow down. Huh? Never mind. I tend to make you all very hungry when you walk out of this room. Not hungry for sales, but hungry. Um, not hungry for food, but hungry for sales. Hungry for commercial sales. Uh, how many agents have gone through my program and they make millions a year. Now, uh, before I start, let me just share this. Uh, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm going to show you uh, at the end of today's program who has gone through my class and make million commission, more than a million dollar commission a year doing commercial. Not just one, but many. I'll prove all this to you at the end of the day, but I'm going to do two hours of real training. I want to really conduct real training. So you learn for two hours before I share you who has gone through it and actually make millions. Many, many agents have gone through it and some of them make millions a year. Now, <coughs> before I start, let me say this. Uh, <coughs> you better believe what my Sam Peter said today. I'll tell you why. Now, let me ask you, uh, if you have a friend in Singapore, be he or she, buy five properties in a year, in one year, do you think he or she is very aggressive in investing in Singapore? I'm quite sure because most of you don't even buy one property a year, right? He buy five a year. Now, not to impress you, but impress upon you. Peter and myself, we bought five commercial properties in Singapore in one year. But you say, David, you have to buy and show us, because he says it's good. You ask him to do commercial, you must buy and show us. Now, to buy and show you, must I show you five times? Two times is good enough for me to prove that anybody in the world that you better go and do commercial. Hey, I bought myself a one, two. You better go and do, uh, go and do commercial. Make money, man. Good enough, too. Uh. What must I risk my money? My money? Five times for you. It's not about this. Uh. It is because I think I can make money. Not for you. Honestly. So, you better believe what we say today. Because, we're not those trainers who say go and do commercial, but we hide one corner. When we say go and do commercial, we are in front. We are in front, putting out our hard money inside. So you have to believe what we say. Now, okay, to begin with, can I just ask you this question? What is the only thing in this world that does not change? Anyone? Change. Very good, this gentleman. There are only two things in this world that I believe will never change. Only two things. First is, first, God is, God will never change. Secondly, change itself will never change. You cannot stop changing. Every day, everyone, everything is changing. If you don't change, you become a dinosaur. Sorry? What number change? Oh, this is, <laughs> okay. Let's discuss about this. Huh? Okay. Okay. Everyone is changing. Now, the government, so called the biggest in Singapore, did they change? They change. Eh? You saw with your own eyes. That's why you give them the vote. Now, let me remind you. Let me bring it back to history. Eh? In 2011, the, the party copy something here. They have the lowest vote in history. Remember 2011? What do you complain? Three major things. MRT 2 squeeze, transportation problem. You allow all the foreigners come, right? Property price. Three major things, right? So they lost all the votes. Eh? Now, class, <coughs> they learned their mistake. What did they do from 2001 to 2005? You know, you saw them how they changed it. They give you free ride in MRT, right? You know, you know actually it only ended early this year. Right? You know, from 2011 to, to early this year, every morning if you take MRT to work, the government pay for you. you know, do you know about this? As long as you leave the station before 7.45. Right? That's why my staff always in the office 7.45. Right? I say, why you come slowly because free MRT. <laughs> you know, I'm not kidding. Right? <coughs> and you say the hospital is squeezed. They build. I counted about eight hospitals. Huh? You can count on two in Yishun, two in Jurong, two in Kang Hawani. They built eight hospitals for you. So you can see how much they change huh? because anything you complain, they do for you. Right? So what happened in 2015? The vote in the vote lowest in history, huh? 2011, huh? shot up to one of the highest in 2015. Correct? Huh? Please recall your history. Huh? 2011 lowest vote, never have before so low. But 2015, one of the highest in history. Why? Because you see that they change for you, right? I complain, you change right? So you give them the vote. Even government know if I don't change the next the next election bye bye. So the government so big they change. Now class, I don't understand why agents cannot change it. I really cannot understand. Some agents have been telling me they do residential already tell me six months no deal. But then and then I ask them one question, have you tried commercial? No. Then I ask why. Now, sir, can I ask you, can I ask you a name, please? Michael. 
Do you need another license to do commercial right now? <coughs> Your RES license, right? Do you need another license to do commercial sales? You don't need. So the same license can do residential and commercial. Now, sir, can I have a name, please? Peter. Peter, do you need another exam to do commercial right now? <laughs> don't need, right? So I asked Asian, what stops you from doing commercial? And the good thing is you can do commercial and residential at the same time, man. Eh? The license never said you can only you can only do one eh? you can do both at the same time. Eh? So you can do commercial but still not give up residential. Then I ask, why can't you do why don't you try commercial? They stare at me. Only one reason eh? because you don't want to change. You're too comfortable in doing what you do, your HTV, your condo sales for last years. So even if it don't work for you now, we just don't want to change eh? because now some got some got this answer. I don't know what to do. Okay, don't know what to do and learn la. Korean la. Learn from people who know what to do la. That's what I do for a living. La. I mean, I do other businesses, but one of the businesses I do is I, I train agents to do commercial. And many have gone through and make millions a year. Commercial. Now, excuse me. So I don't understand why agents can change. I'm going to tell you a story of this agent. He's a very popular agent. When he was making a lot of money, not, not making money, yeah? it's not not making money. Yeah? When he was making a lot of money, he changed to make even more money. So agents who don't, who don't actually make enough money, I think you better change. Yeah? If not very soon, you'll become dinosaur. No. The story of this gentleman called Kelvin Fong is one generally. Don't worry, I'm not here to do recruitment. <coughs> I don't know recruitment. I want to share a story with him, Kelvin Fong. He's the best agent I've ever recruited and worked with in my last 20 years <coughs> in real estate. I mean, 20 years in real estate. He's my best agent or partner I've ever recruited and worked with. He's now running a very big team. You know, you, you know him very well, powerful negotiator. <coughs> very happy for him. Now class, let me tell you how he started. About 15 years ago, he joined me. Okay, very talented couple, very hard working. They started selling three room, four room, five room. Now the first year they top rookie. Eh? First year they make 160, I, I think it's 168,000 to be exact. First year they make 161,000 become top rookie. Second year 200,000 commission, third year 300,000 commission. Now let me, I will explain to you in a few minutes time. Eh? It is very difficult at time to make to sell HDB to make three hundred thousand. Very difficult, and I will tell you shortly. Eh? They come to my room. I mean, Kevin came to the room. I think Kevin, what is it? He asked me one question, David. No matter how hard I try, I feel that I can only make three hundred over thousand a year. So I asked Kevin one question: How much do you want to make? He said a million dollar a year. You know what's my answer? I'm his manager. I should, I should, I should help him, right? Instead of helping him, you know what I told him? Don't dream, huh? Instead of helping him, I say don't dream. You know why? Why I say don't dream? Because I, of course, I know how to be there. La. I've trained many agents to make a million dollars. Kevin Fong, Janet Lin, CJ, Richard Tan, Richard Hao, Bobby, so many. Don't you know I know the way to make a million dollars a year? So I'm going to tell you don't dream because you will never be there. Why? Now let me ask you one thing. Eh? If you want to go Jurong, where must you, which direction must you go? West, right? If you go east, will you ever reach Jurong? You will only go out Changi Airport and, and, and go into the sea, right? You will never reach Jurong, right? So I tell you, you, don't, you will never go to Jurong, Kevin, because you're going east. Jurong's in the west. Class, he asked me what happened. I said, Kevin, because you're selling kacang putih. He asked me, what do you mean by kacang putih? Now let me explain to you why it's so difficult to even make 300,000 selling HDB flat at that time. Now, class, let me ask you one. 15 years ago, how much is your trade flat? I'm okay with facing MRT. 150,000, uh, you buy one tree facing the MRT. Uh. I'm okay. One of the best. If you're good, you collect 3,000 commission. If you're lousy, 1%, you collect 1,005. That's how we started. Uh. Run for three months. I'm okay. You tell me we sell MOQ, no? Run for three months. 1,005 commission. Now, how much is the fire room at that time? Okay, Mira. Give me the best. Okay, Mira. 200,000. If you're good, you collect five six thousand. If you're lousy, <coughs> one deal, two thousand plus three thousand. Now, now it's different. Huh? I know you sell Pokemon Fire Flight, flat, you can collect eighteen thousand. Huh? Because the flat itself is nine hundred thousand. Our time, two hundred over thousand. Okay. So your commission, huh? if you sell HDB, your commission will range from thousand plus to five six thousand, right? Depending on what room, what room size you sell, thousand plus to five six thousand. What's the average commission? Three thousand, right? Thousand plus to six thousand, three thousand is the average. Now to sell. To make 300,000 commission at that time, selling HDB flats a year, how much must you sell a month? 30,000, right? 
To sell 30,000 commission a, a month at a time, how many flats must you sell? Average? 10 flats. 10 flats, huh? 10 flats a, a month, huh? Yeah. A month, huh? He's right, yeah? 100 over flats a year. I saw okay, I told Kevin, Kevin, you are already selling average 10 flats a month, eh? To make 3,000, eh? You sure you can sell 100 over flats, ah? Uh? A year? No, you, 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 you're, already, you're selling 100 over flats a year. You sell, you sure you can sell 300 over flats a year? You mean one day, one flat? So good, lah. Don't dream, right? I say you must increase your volume by three times, eh? Right, from 300,000 to 1 million. You must sell 30 over flats a month, eh? One day, one flat, eh? I say, how, how, how hard you work also impossible, right? To go to Jerome, you must go west by going east, you will never be there. Then he asked me then, how to be there? I say you cannot sell kacang putih, you must learn to sell Mercedes Benz. He said, what do you mean by Mercedes Benz again? Simple, excuse me. I said very simple. You must learn to sell Mercedes Benz. He said, what is it? I say you must learn to sell condo. He asked me why. Do you agree with me 15 years ago, a lot of condo are 1-2 million? Plenty, right? Not today only. Huh? That time already, a lot, a lot, lot 1-2 million. I said, Kevin, you need not be good to collect 2%, just 1%. You just sell 4 condo a month, 2 million each. 20,000 each deal, right? One month is 80,000 commission, right? One year is 1 million? Kevin, sell Mercedes Benz. One deal is 20,000. Four deals, eighty thousand a month. One year, nine sixty, one million dollar. Kevin asked, David, I'm doing now so well in HDB. If I change, what if it don't work? Good question. Good question, Michael. If you change, there's a chance that you won't work, right? Agree? Right? Yeah. Maybe you will work, right? But if you don't change, but if you don't change. No need to dream, right? <coughs> Nothing will happen, right? Be happy with 300,000. I said, Kevin, be happy with 300,000 if you don't change. Be happy with it. Don't complain. Because nothing will happen, right? If you don't change. I respect his courage so much. Huh? He didn't talk to me on this topic for a few months. After a few months, he came back to my room. I said, Kevin, what is it? That's why I say he's so talented. He only told me one sentence and the rest is history. He said, David, I've decided to do condo. Full stop. In the next six years, six years continuously, he and, Cal he and Janet took home more than a million dollar commission every year selling condo. Indeed, a peak year was 1.6 million, I remember. Every year, more than a million dollar. Until he went to management, Cal uh, Janet gave birth. So they slowed down. Six years of continuously breaking through a million dollar commission. Why? Because when they are doing very well, they break through, they change to do, to make even more money. Many of you in this room are not even making enough for your family. What do you lose if you change? Nothing. If you don't change, the same thing happens. If you change, maybe there's a breakthrough. And the good thing is, your license required, allows you to do both, even at the same time. And I don't understand why you change. Cannot change. The only reason is, you don't want to change. Believe yourself, if you're in this category right now, too comfortable, with what you're doing, when many agents are making millions in commercial, you still do not want to change. Now, next. Talk about residential. David, no need to change. Uh. Residential improving. Uh. Not very good. Uh. Is it really very good? Good. I tell you, good. You know what's the problem? Too good, too fast. <laughs> you don't even know it's too good, too fast. Class, let me ask you one thing. Eh? January to March. Three, the three months, URA official figure, property went up by how, how, how many percent? Three old percent, right? Three old percent, eh? One, every quarter, three old percent, one year is 15 percent. Do you know about this? Do you know about three old percent times four is 15, 12 to 15 percent, eh? Probably end up uh, 13 to 13, 14, close to 15. Do you remember history, eh? In 2011, that means the 2009, 2010. Do you remember property price went up by an average of about 13 to 15 percent each year? Do you remember this? And you blame the government. Now so expensive. Ah. What do you do? You don't vote them, right? What do you do? There's a minister who won in his 
Tampanese. Which minister? He won in Tampanese, but he has to resign as minister, right? Why? Because he was the minister for national development. He took the blame for property prices. Shut up, right? You can't remember. You know, right? Singaporeans are too forgetful. You think the government will allow it to happen again? <coughs> he won in his what? No, he won in Japanese, right? But he has to bow down, paise, resign. Because you complain the property price shoot up too high, 15% a year. Correct? And he came down as a minister, even though he won in his what? <coughs> he won in Japanese. And you think the government like, is so forgetful like you? Eh? You think they will let you let this happen again? Let me tell you, first quarter 3%. If this quarter end of June and now 3%, I assure you in July or August they will act. Two quarter already 6 percent eh? One year is 15%. You're going to vote them. Two years later, it's a G again. You're going to vote them out again. No? You're going to lose a minister again. Eh? Our government is a good government. They will not repeat the same mistake twice. Trust me. If you don't believe me, <coughs> I will prove to you I'll prove to you now how closely is the government watching the real estate market. You don't believe it until I show it to you. Almost in the last three, four years, I'll show you all the newspaper articles in the last three, four years, up to the latest few months ago. Almost every month they talk about the cooling measures. How closely they're watching on it. And you still think that they will like the residential just shoot up like that. Let me tell you, it's good, but too good, too fast. If you don't believe me, I'm going to show you <coughs> how, what they say about cooling measure almost every month and what is the latest in the last few months, what they are talking about, what they are talking about, the, the cooling measure, what they are talking about the market and you, you think that whether you still want to work blindly in residential in July when they announce more rounds of cooling measure, you flatten again. Or you want to do commercial, you know they will never have any cooling measures got plans. Now, let me show you one. Okay. <coughs> Property market stabilizing but curbs will stay. <coughs> this continue, what Taman continue to say, eh? given the run in the prices in the last four years, it's too early to start relaxing our measures. Okay? More. MND say too early to relax property cooling measures. Is it over? No. What did MAS say? Too early to ease property cooling measures. Is it over? No. What did Taman say? The property price could drop further because he knows I'm not going to give up on the cooling measures. More. Co-owner say premature to leave property cooling measures. More. Okay, is it over? No. Government to continue easing. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Um, Mr. Kaur said, yeah, as for the call to re-examine property commission, he said, this is not the time yet. Okay, is it over? No. Let me skip some, there are too many. Minister Kaur said, too soon to ease property curbs. Is it over? No. Single digit 4 and HG prices next year are a good thing. Is it over? No. Minister Kaur continue to say, yeah, Minister Kaur say, good if we still price flat continue. Is it over? No. What did Ministry of Finance say? Do you think of IBSD? Don't dream. Too soon. Too soon. Okay, is it over now? Even in 2015 election, uh, many agents come and tell me, David, election coming, they will leave the measure very soon. What? Chong, uh, chong, uh. I said, chong, chong, what? I said, who tell you they will leave the measure? You said, will lah, election coming lah. Indeed, it's the reverse, no? In 2001, uh, because they, like, they didn't control the property price, you vote against them, you think they will let it happen again? Now, class, the government also heard this rumor before the 2015 election. They sent a minister come and tell you. Election, nothing to do with cooling measure. Please don't believe. Nothing to do. We won't leave it just because of election. It is the reverse. They must control property price for election. Plus, more. <clears throat> okay. After election, he took over. Roland Swan. What did he say? Not time yet to unwind cooling measures. Is it over? No. Okay. Roland Swan again say too early to leave property curbs. Is it over? No. Okay. Many. Skip some. Okay. The Ministry of National Development was very direct in its reply. It's too early to wrap the measures now. Is it over? No. Okay, the government has however replaced it. It's not time yet to roll back its cooling measures. Is it over? No. Government said again, too early to leave property curbs. Okay, Lawrence Wong said again, too early to unwind cooling measures. So now you believe me in the last three years, huh? almost every month they come out and say about cooling measures. But Agent Boi Hiao, I asked Agent, do you see this? They never, they never see this one. You know why? Because when Agent read newspaper, you know what they read? Eh? Zhou Jie Long marry who? Chai Ling marry who? It's what you read, but I read about all this. Because I know this is my rice bowl. This is my rice bowl, so I read about all this. I want to know what's happening in the market. Yes, okay, let me continue. Huh? Okay. Is it over? No. What did MAS say? Okay. <coughs> MAS said too early to leave property cooling measures. Is it over? 
Okay, still, MAS said property cooling measures to stay. Is it over? Who said this? Lawrence Wong. Lawrence Wong said cooling measures to remain for now. Is it over? No. Okay, central bank, MAS said banks keeping the cooling measure in place. Okay, so now you believe me. Now you believe me. Almost every month they come out to say something about cooling measures. Now you believe me. And you think they'll let the cooling measures, you think they'll let the property price shoot up like that. You are dreaming. You are dreaming. You are dreaming. Trust me. Trust me. Okay, they will never, never let. They will never, never let the cooling measures just shoot up this way. Hi. Hi. Don't dream. Let me show you at more on what is happening. Okay? Now, nearer and nearer to our date already. Eh? It's last year already. Eh? Early last year, Lawrence Wong said housing curbs may stay for some time. Now, what does some time means, in your opinion, as a government? When you say some time means at least two, three years, right? If it's six months later, nine months later, I'll leave it, then it's soon. Huh? I'll leave it soon. Huh? Stay for some time means at least for two, three years. But, but, Buyers and developers feel that they will leave the measures very soon. So all rush in the buy. Rush in the buy, huh? Okay? <laughs> now. <laughs> MES become worried. What? Our Minister Lawrence Wong already said he will stay for some time. People still rush in the buy. Last June, they came out to warn people, don't read our signal wrongly, huh? You are not lifting the cooling measures. But sentiment driven. You buy, I buy, I better go and buy. I saw a retiree uh, went to pay 10% EBS to buy an uh, apartment. Uh, I asked him, you record? I think two apartments. Uh. Why do you want to buy a third one? Why do you want to buy a third one? Right, third one is 10%, right? EBSD, I think. Uh. Uh, first one is, uh, second one is 7%. Uh, third one. So I said, why do you want to buy a third one? You want to retire already. Why do you want to commit this kind of money? Are you people buying, I better buy, not price go up. Sentiment driven. They never think of what is happening, eh? whether the government control again. Okay? Then, people still continue to buy because they think, ah, yeah, my neighbor buy, but buy, not price will go up. Okay? Last November, Lawrence Wong came out to warn, uh, caution, he warned bar home buyers and developers, uh, hey, be careful. Uh. Okay? People still continue to buy <coughs> blindly. I, I use the word blindly. Okay? Now, URA has made. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to discuss the measures that you are doing with uh, developers. Uh. You are introduced a lot of measures that make it more difficult for developers to buy and block. But so I'm, going to, I'm not going to discuss now for time, uh, for time uh, concern. Uh. Okay, <coughs> now. And last year, MAS came out to warn the market again. Don't buy blindly. MAS. So you know the direction of the government is against the, the market trend now, right? It's too far. I told you it's too fast, too soon, right? You know what? Government is warning the market every few months because because they think it's not right. You think the government will allow this to happen? Now I prove to you, uh, the government is warning the people don't anyhow buy. Okay, you think the government is allowing this? Then you are actually dreaming. Now more. Another warning of property markets, huh? Okay, they keep on warning and warning and warning. <laughs> okay, then in March, in February, they raised the buyer stamp duty by one percent, right? Mm. Now class. Is this a warning shot? It is. Uh, if, it's, if it's just an adjustment of the buyer stamp duty uh, across the board, uh, then why didn't they adjust for commercial? Do you know that the 3% less 5,000 uh, 5, 5, become 4% less 5,004, right? It's only for residential. Yes. Commercial is still 3% less 5,004. So if you tell me it's an adjustment of rates across the board, then why commercial they didn't go up by 1%? So you know it's a warning shot to buyers in, in residential. You are looking at it. I give you a warning shot. Bam, one percent. You still want to buy? I told you in July, August, they will act if this quarter another three percent increase. Now class. Okay, more. What did the expert now start to say? This is quite latest, huh? One two months ago, huh? Further home prices spikes may spell risk of renewed cooling measures. Now they are ready. Many talking in the market. Really. If this momentum is going to continue, I think more rounds of cooling measures will appear. Now, let me tell you when, likely July, August, because they probably wait for this quarter results to be out. It will be out in July. 
if this quarter is run by 3.0%, I told you right, January to March is 3.0% already. April to June, another 3.0% means a whole year going to be 15%. Means they will act very soon because they will never let history repeat by itself. In 2011, you vote his minister out because he said property price we didn't control for me. A plus. Okay. Let me ask you one thing. <coughs> As an agent, do you want to do you want to work on something blindly? You work so hard, you think presidential is coming back, but three months later, you heard of more rounds of cooling measures that the whole thing flattened again. Oh, you want to do this? Huh? Yes, you can still do presidential. I'm not saying you cannot because I told you the license can do both. But at the same time, I learned about commercial. Because I have many agents who make millions a year selling commercial. I know who can make money. You could be one of them. So I can do residential, I can also learn commercial and start commercial. In case, if something really happened to residential again, July, August, or more cooling measures, you know you can still focus on commercial. You're not dead. And why are you not doing this when your license can do both? I cannot understand unless you tell me you don't want. The only reason is you don't want. You refuse to change. Now, on the other hand, why commercial will still be good? Because I want to prove to you, if you go into commercial now, there are still a lot of commercial sales to be done. In the very first place, let me tell you why it will still be good. Huh? Because there's no cooling measures up to now. Zero cooling measures for the last six or seven years. Tons of rounds of cooling measures in residential, right? Zero in commercial. Why are you not doing something that you know year after year there will be no cooling measures? Why are you not doing it? Do you know why commercial there's no cooling measures? Eh? Do you why? Do you know why? <coughs> they cannot have one. Because you have cooling measures in commercial, you lose jobs. Eh? People will vote against you. Eh? Why? Residential is vote. Eh? If I cannot afford to buy a house, I will vote you out. That's why they must control. Commercial is the reverse. Eh? You control, people vote you out. I'll tell you why. Eh? Simple. If tomorrow you tell Microsoft, eh, hey, please come to Singapore to set up your HQ, your Asia HQ headquarters in Singapore. Please employ 1,000 Singaporeans to work for you. Please, I give you incentive. Microsoft come and eh? say, okay, Ken, I'm going to buy this office tower to be my Microsoft HQ in Shenton Way. The government say, uh, but you must pay me 15% ABST. Huh? Huh? What will the government say? Then never mind, I set up my HQ in Hong Kong. Straight away, you lose 1,000 jobs, right? Because they are supposed to employ 1,000 jobs in Singapore. You ask them to pay 15% ABST. Never mind, I go Hong Kong. Huh? Hong Kong say no tax. Huh? I buy the office building tax. Huh? So, class, you cannot have cooling measures in commercial. You only lose jobs. So, why do you do something that you know? you know there will be no cooling measures. Why you want to do something that don't know whether July, August, something will happen? Now, now <laughs> at the same time, <coughs> I'm going to show you what is the market movement <coughs> for the last one, two years to prove to you. I think Peter has shown you. Uh, I think he has given you some example where that office is moving. Uh. I'm going to show you a lot of articles for the last one, two years on commercial sales. And you know whether, you know whether if you start commercial now, you've got things to sell. Whether the market's moving. Now, okay. Commercial. Okay, let me skip some. Huh? Too many. Eh? Okay, let me start from offices. Singapore market continues recovering. Quarter one. Office market starts shifting in Lala's favor again. Okay. Singapore office market improving as supply tapers off. Investor look again at office property. Q2 ran up for CBD great office. Okay, so I'll turn around in the office property market. Q2 prime office rent up. CBD office rent set to rise. Right? Worst seem to be over <coughs> CBD grade A office. Prime office rent to jump 15.8% uh, over 3 years, night Frank say this. Okay, Silver's new MD says 10% rental growth for uh, 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 grade A office building. Okay, Kai has turned around for office market. Office market starts shooting levels. Okay, so I can show you. Singapore strata title office market start, gains momentum. Okay, so class, 
You've seen enough, huh? some are very latest, one, two months ago, just now some article I show you. Office is coming up very, very strongly. Why are you not doing this? Now, <laughs> three point, Qatar funds buy this Marina Bay Office Tower, Asia Tower 1 for 3.4 B. Now this is not just a normal building. Huh? It is actually uh, Asia Pacific record, the most expensive building ever sold in Asia Pacific. Huh? Now, you think this will happen in the last one, two years if the office market is no good. Who will buy record price from the office when you think the office is bad? Class. Figure speak by itself. Huh? After they sold Asia Tower 1, BlackRock said, ha ah, ha, that was a landlord. Huh? So good, huh? so high price. Huh? They said, I'm going to buy more property in Singapore. Plus, they say now they want to sell the second tower away. Asia Tower sold for 3.4 B, and now they say, oh, I'm good, second tower. Did they sell away? It sold away successfully. Who bought it? CCT bought it for 2.1 B. Okay? Billions of office, uh, billions, the one tower billions that uh, they sell that t shirt. Uh. You say, Commercial is no good. Okay, never mind. <coughs> okay. Let me see this one. Uh. MIP sold 13563 for 247 million. Alpha Funds buy 78 Shenton Way for I think 500 million. Okay, CTT bought Capital Green for I think, uh, sorry, it's a bit blur, the, 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 the projector. Uh. I think uh, 500 million. Okay. Okay, they also sold one George Street for 1.18 B. Switch trading building may fetch record price, it's not may have fetch. They already sold record price. This this building was sold record price, huh? <clears throat> okay. Consulting consulting mouse over selling Exeter Tower. Now, now let me tell you what's a, what's a, what kind of response is this? Huh? The owner of Exeter Tower, Perenia. Some investor led by Perenia are considering a collective sale of Exeter Tower. They're thinking about it to sell the whole tower away. Huh? For 1.65 B. After receiving after having received a number of inquiries regarding the building, now it's like that one. Eh? People call you, hey, you want to sell the building, I got buyers. Eh? It's like that one. Eh? You want to sell, eh? I got buyers. Eh? So they, huh? so many phone calls. I, I probably will sell. You are still not doing this kind of market. Eh? People calling you, you want to sell, eh? I got buyers. Why are you not doing this? We're here to learn, eh? don't know what to do, learn. Eh? Okay, more. <coughs> okay. This building is sold also, uh, <coughs> sold to um, uh, Stanley Hope, the uh, uh, Casino King Macau. Okay, Many life, there will be no more doing duty. Soap, this soap, huh? 747 million. Huh? Soap, maybe a soap to PWC. To Many Life, sorry, Many Life. Okay, this is soap for 1.78 billion. Okay, CLS bought this for 530 million. Okay, 110, uh, Robinson also for 45 billion. Million, sorry. Child Family bought Sister Street 139 for, I think, 100 million. Okay. Right, many more. I skip, let me skip some. So many. Oxley bought Chevron House, six 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 zero million. Not Oxley, you know, traditionally is developed condo, right? They have just bought an office building, right? Why? Why? I think there are many reasons, uh. But I believe one of the reason is they also want to spread the risk now, right? Because they will never know what's happening to residential tomorrow, right? Honestly, they keep on buying land for residential. They bought a lot of land for residential, huh? Recently, but they also have, know that it's a risk, right? Right. Why did I put some money in commercial? Anything happen here? Here's to go money. No? <coughs> Class, I think one of the reasons they also want to spread the risk because they know residential is uh, very uncertain, even though it looks good now. But you know the government is always on top of it. You know the government always want to control this, and you have to control it because if you cannot afford a house, who's going to vote for them? Let's be honest about it. Okay, they just bought this building up for 60 million. How a year ago, only? Yeah? <coughs> More. Uh, 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 German shipping group sold this. Uh, pick, uh, bought a middle road building for 60 million. Then being sold, <coughs> I think three of three or five floors of potential tower for 207 million. Okay, this one five office floor in the Suntec sold. Okay, this brand sister bought some space in Tong building. Oh, class. So I sh I prove to you. Offices are moving the market. Your question is, oh, David, uh, these are 500 million, eh? 1 billion. I don't do this kind of big building. Yes, I understand. But what I want to show you, why I want to show you big deals? Because only big deals can be reported in newspaper. <laughs> Correct? Uh? If the uh, reporter can report $1 million, he'll be sacked tomorrow, right? <laughs> the boss say, $1 million put inside here. You think my newspaper is so thick? Uh? Sack. You know that you can only report big deals. How do you report $1 million in the newspaper? Who will? Which, which reporter to do that? What million dollar deal? Get lost. So I was. You can only see all the big deals in the newspaper. So I can only show the big deal in the newspaper. You want to check the small deal? Go, go club it like what Peter show you. Hold on. Eh? 
Now, why do I want to show the big deals? Because property investment is like shares investment, right? The big boys buy, the small boys will follow. The big boys sell, the small boy will sell, correct? Right? To show you the big boys are buying, to prove to you that the small boys are also buying. Just that you've got to find them. How to find them? This is what I do in my seven days program. I train agents how to find all these buy and sell. Now, <coughs> class. So I provide you office, shop house. Shop house, huh? now if you buy CBD shop house, Chinatown, huh? one shop house is 20 million. Eh? But do you know that they're selling my t shirts? I'm going to show you if you don't believe me. Huh? Okay. Now, shop house deals across cross, uh, 5 million up to date. Huh? On the first four months, they cross 5 million. Eh? Okay, shop house deal gain momentum. Right? Demand for shop house you need to remain strong in 2018. Shop house in, in demand again. Huh? Shop house uh, draw king investors' uh, interest. Shop and shop house now overtake residential in any auctions. Huh? The best seller. Okay? This one means uh, D1, D2. Huh? Shop houses, both volume and prices went up. <coughs> okay, our quick uh, shop house sold for 18 million. High group sold this uh, concept hotel for, I think for 30 old million. Selling old million, sorry, 75 million. Okay. Right? It sold another hotel in Kyongsek Road again, I think this time for 30 old million. Tenny Quack bought 7 shop house, 81.4 million. Uh, yeah, sold, no, sold, no, sold to AM uh, Real Estate. This gentleman in Bola shop house. Right? Okay. Kyongsek Hotel sold again, and uh, one shop house in Amon Street sold for more than $4,000 PSF. Okay. Fragrance bought uh, Javis Block for 26 Okay. Yuan Sen sold the two shop houses away. Eh? Okay. Right. AM bought shop houses. Okay, this one and this one. Okay, A2.5, 5 million. M Bank acquired Juchek property, yeah, that is a shop house actually for 27 million. Okay, D Rubber sold Revenue Shop House for 55.6 million. X Brand bought this shop house for 25 million. <coughs> Fragrance bought Chinatown Shop House for 20.5 million. This shop house sold for 18.5 million. Okay, shop house owner wrote more prime properties, but I said, what, you want to buy shop house? 20 million also want to buy, so they wrote more for you to buy. Okay, D Foundation sold this shop house at 20 million. <coughs> Okay, now this, his name is uh, Zane Fancy, this gentleman. If you, if you do commercial, if you do shop house, you must know him. Uh, he's one of the very popular investors in shop house. Once you reach him, you have plenty of shop house to rent and sell. He always advertises for sale by owner. His staff will advertise for him under for sale by owner. This one, one, one I think I'm going to teach you in, the, in, the, in my seven days program. Plus, he's now a big boy in owning shop houses. Now, let me sh show you some of what he says. Uh. He started with a few million dollars, now he is, he is worth 170 million. That's how much he's worth now. And you tell me shop house is no good. Class. Shop house in CBD is 15, 20, 25 million. But they're selling like agents. And I tell you, some of my agents have gone through my class, they sell shop house. They really make millions a year. Millions of commission a year. I'm going to show you all this later. Okay? <coughs> now, class. So now you believe me. There are a lot of deals for you to be like shop house, offices. If you say retail, retail affected by e-commerce, then don't touch retail. Uh. You can do shop house and do offices. Uh. Shop house is never affected by e-commerce. Uh. Because on the ground floor is normally F&B, upper floor is normally office. Okay? So why are you not learning to do all this? Okay, let me skip some. Uh. Many, yeah, many. Okay? Even I'll tell you shops are selling very well, but I'm, I'm going to skip some uh, because uh, to, to save some time uh, today. Okay? <coughs> now class. First thing, so I prove to you, uh, if you rely on residential, you are very dangerous because you will never know if the government will be again, you're flattened again. So I suggest you, you can still do residential, I'm not saying you can, uh, but I think you should be doing commercial also to ensure that there's something new and you know there's no there's no cooling measure that you can always show one. Okay, first, I've also proven to you if you start to do a commercial sales, there's a lot of commercial sales to be done. You just learn what to do, which is what I do for the set in the seven days program. What, how do you find them? How do you sell them? How do you market them? The next thing I'm going to introduce to you is TDSR. Now, class, I'm going to share something with you now in this room that after you walk out of this room, you'll say that I should learn this earlier. I should learn this earlier. I'll tell you why, class. TDSR. Many buyers you serve, you serve them for three months. After that, they select a condo. I want to buy this condo. We bring them to the banker. What will happen? The banker say, loan first, TDSR first. Three months wasted. Show him three months at 30 minutes, all wasted. If you show him a commercial unit, he 
go and bought it not right now. Either. You know why? Now class, no only commercial loan, there's no cooling measures. Eh? Your commercial loan eh, can be 80, 80, 80. Even three, four units that you buy, it can also be 80. Now class, I told you I bought five in a year. <coughs> what I sold away for a quick profit. The four I kept, so I, I need four loans. Eh? All the four are 80, 80, 80, 80. First, all the loans in commercial can be 80%, even if you go to the bank for five loans, it still can be 80%, as long as you can prove to the bank you can loan. Residential not possible, right? Because the government says so, no. Government says maximum 50%. No matter how rich you are, 50% maximum. Commercial is 80, 80, 80, 80. First, secondly, all residential loans must go through TDSR, so your loan go in first, or your client go in first. But let me remind you, many commercial loans need not go through TDSR. Do you know about this? You do not know about this. You complain why the bank uh, never approve your buyer's loan, so you, you cannot close the deal. But you did, you, not, you did not learn commercial, because if I gone through to buy a commercial, maybe his loan is approved, because many commercial loans need not go through TDSR. You can get approval, 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 approval. I'm going to share with you in the 70s, what kind of loans in commercial need not go through TDSR. Many of the buyers that you serve need not even go through TDSR. You can just buy and buy and buy. And you're not learning this. And let me tell you, class, <coughs> the way I structure my commercial loan, after I took one loan, then I, when I want to buy the second one, the second bank don't even know my, I, I already took, up, I already took up another loan. It, and it's legal, legal, legal. Residential, not possible, right? The bank will know all your loans in residential. So your TDRs are always first, because they add up all your loans. First, my commercial loan, I honestly tell you, legal one. I take up this loan from this bank on commercial. When I go for another commercial loan in another bank, the other bank don't even know I have this loan in another bank. And I can do it legally. All this do you learn? You didn't learn. Why? Because you only think about residential loan. Focus on residential. And you didn't know in commercial so much so many things are possible. Why why are all this possible? Because there's no cooling measures in commercial. The bank can do anything with you as, as long as it's legal. Residential, the bank cannot do anything with you because everything they do with you, many is crossing the line. The government has a cooling measure there. So they say cannot. So why are you not learning about all this in commercial where your buyers can take loan easier? your deals can go through easier. Why not learning all this? Now class, the loan is very important to you. Not because for the referral from the bank, you know because of what? If you don't get the loan approved, they will never buy from you. You will never get a commission, do you know about this? Do you know that loan is so important to you? In my seven days, I'll teach you about loans. Let me tell you, the loan must come first before the deal can come. Don't underestimate this thing called loan. If there's no loan, you have no use. Forget about 1% or 2% commission. Let me cover more on this in 7 days. <coughs> okay, ever since the TDSR started, I, I place a lot of emphasis on sharing about loans with my, my, my class. So that you know, oh, the loan is so important now. The loan get through, you get the deal through. The loan don't get through, you take zero home. Don't say the referral, your commission is going to make. Okay? So better start thinking about this. Why are you not learning about commercial? That your loans can go through much easier. <laughs> okay? Now, the other thing. David, I'm convinced. <clears throat> I'm convinced. I must start to do commercial. I want to learn commercial. How? Simple. I tell my seven days program, but David, I'm scared. Why are you scared? Because I always fail exam. Oh. Yeah, this guy always fail exam. Okay. I'm class. Let me say this. Good news for you. My seven days program all will pass on because I have, I have no exam. So all of you will pass. Then the next question comes up, David, then, then so simple, can I don't learn them up? No. It is simple, but you still must learn. Why? Because many agents thought, many agents thought commercial is so simple like the HDB and like the, like the condo sales. They went into it without learning and they make big mistake. Big mistake. How big is the mistake? Let me share, share some stories today. I'm going to share three stories with you today. 
why three, not one? To prove to you, many agents make mistakes in commercial because they didn't learn before they start commercial. Now, I'm not going to tell you a story from here or there. You may not believe me. I'm going to show you real story, how real they appear in the newspaper, so you know they are real newspaper story. Now, class, so you sit, sit, sit up and listen to this tree story to make sure you don't make this kind of mistake when you do commercial. Now, class, the first story cost the agent half a million. The second story cost the agent about one million. The third story cost the agent five million. And they're all real story. So you better learn before you start your commercial because they are so different from condos and HDB. This paper, huh? real one. Huh? Buyer must pay GSD in a $3.8 million deal. Now, sir, can I have a name, please? Chinese. Chinese. Okay, you've been serving your buyers for condo and HDB. Have you ever asked them to pay GSD? No, right? Very good, you're right. David, pay your GSD on bad properties. Uh, that is only for residential. Let me remind you. Whenever you bring a buyer to buy commercial or industrial, as long as the seller is GSD registered, and I tell you, 90% of sellers are GSD registered. 9 out of 10 deal for GSD. The buyer must pay 7% more. <clears throat> Michael, you bring a family out for a family dinner this Sunday. The bill came $100. How much the GST? $7, right? 7%, $7. So what do you do? Do you bargain? How to bargain? Akong's money, right? So Michael said, how to bargain? David, pay lah. Just pay, huh? 100 plus $7. Okay. Good. But let me remind you, property is not $100. Every million dollar that you buy is 70000 GST. If you bring your client to buy three million, the property is three million, is two hundred ten thousand GST. You ask your client to pay two hundred ten thousand GST. You think your client will pay? You see what? The money I can buy a three room flat, no. Pay GST? Who are you? I'm not going to buy from you. You will never be a close to you. You will never be able to close to you. Who's going to pay you seven thousand for every million? What's this? Buyer don't even know must pay agent. <coughs> agent also don't know. This one bought already. Eh. After they bought, eh, the seller said, hey, must pay you GST. The buyer calculate. Eh. 3.8 million is almost 300,000 GST. Eh. He said, I'm not going to pay. Eh. The seller said, no, don't pay, I sue you. Eh. The buyer did not want to pay, never pay, and still fight the seller in court for one year. He fought in court for one year. Now let me ask you one thing. When the seller collect GST from you, does he keep? He pay to who? Government. He collect from you, give to government. It's Akong's money. Right? And you want to fight over Akong's money in court, who will win? Should Akong win? Oh. So, Akong win. Ah. The court say, buyer must pay. So he end up still must pay the 300,000 GST. But he already fight one year in court, and maybe another 200,000 legal fees. Huh? 200,000 plus 300,000, he now have to pay half a million, right? The buyer. What, will, what do you think the buyer will do after paying? You know the answer. <laughs> you know the answer. <coughs> so the agent is half a million poorer, right? But now, agent clever, right? you say got insurance, right? Insurance pay, right? Will insurance pay? Not for this case. He will pay. Insurance will pay. Yes, but how much will the insurance pay? Huh? <coughs> One million. Ah. <laughs> how much will the insurance pay? Class, let me tell you, let me remind you. Ah. All of you are only insured for 100,000 to get your license. In this case, if the insurance pay, the insurance only pay 100,000, the agent pay 400,000 itself. Because the insurance will only pay up the maximum limit. How much you insured? 100,000 for all of you. Class, let me tell you, your insurance is never enough. Ah. To cover any mistake, it's just good enough for you to get renewed license. Okay, <laughs> now, so <clears throat> half a million problem, real. To me, uh, this so easy. This so easy to resolve. Uh. If this buyer or the agent has came to my uh, my course, uh, they are now half a million richer. Half a million richer. I tell you why. So easy to resolve. Now let me let me tell you how to resolve. Uh. The GST is Akong's money. Must pay one. But if you know what to do, 
you will advise a, a buyer to pay up by completion, 7%. If he do it well, or you can advise him to do it well, within one, two months after paying the GST, the government will give you back the GST in full. In full, eh? you don't lose a single cent if you do it correctly. So completion, you pay your 20% 20, 20 cash, right? Let's say assuming bank you 80% loan. 20% eh? cash plus 7% GST, completion. One, two months later, you take away 7% GST. So GST becomes zero, right? So you still pay 20% cash on him. Buyer don't know what to do. Now lose half a million. Agent now face a problem. Class, how do you do it? There are two methods. Two methods to handle GST in properties. Now class, method number one, very lousy. I'm not going to share now. Very lousy method. I will only share it in the seven days if you want to share, but the one don't use. Second method is the one I'm going to teach you now. You use the second method. We always use the second method, which I'm going to share now. Now, this method is you get your buyer to buy and sell the property under a company. Ah, David, how to buy and sell a property under a company? Ah, this is a problem. <clears throat> Our class. In the first place, what kind of company do you set up for your client to buy the property? You got LLP, you got sole providership, you got partnership, you got the, uh, uh, you got. Private even private there are two three types. Which type? Which type? Registered yes. Uh, can I have any please? Jenny's. Jenny's now. Just now you mentioned something. What is it? Which which one should you set up to buy a property? <laughs> Try that. Never mind. <coughs> so provide the so. Okay, our class. I have one graduate like you. Uh. He also came to attend my seven days program. A bit late. A bit late. I tell you why. Uh. He was sitting. I think around this this this. I think this table. So he raised the hand after each his hand. I said, what's, what, what's, what's the question? He seems very worried. He told me he set up a sole proprietorship to buy an industrial property. And now that GST is stuck. And he said the GST is 100,000. If he cannot resolve a problem, the client will go after him 100,000. And I asked him, why is it stuck? He said, because he used sole proprietorship. I said, good luck to you. Of all the type of companies, uh, sole proprietorship is the worst to claim back GST, and he used the worst type. He regretted not coming to my course earlier. If you had done it a few months earlier, he would have saved 100,000. <clears> he still go through my course uh, to learn other things, because, but this is already too late, it's happened already. Now, class, there are many comp type of companies to set up, but you should advise your client to set up a private limited. I can, I, I can tell you that. Even if you didn't go through the seminar, I'll tell you the answer now. Private but the thing is, what kind of problem is that? There are a few types of problems that you do it correctly, good, do it wrongly, again, problem. Now, in the first place, do you know how to set up a company? Next, do you know how to buy your company? Third, when to claim back GST? How to claim back GST? Right? All this you must learn, no? You go and do it blindly, along the way, and if stack a problem, the client blame you because easier to push the blame to you and then sue the agent. So you must know the step very well. Plus, plus one more very important thing. When you buy a property under Tanakao, personally, you go to the bank for mortgage loan. So it's so simple, right? Everyone do it, right? But when you buy a company, buy a property under a company ABC Prime Limited, when you go to the bank, it's a different story. Do you know that a lot of companies cannot get loans? And a lot of banks don't loan to a lot of companies, right? <coughs> if you ask your client to buy under this company, he go to the bank, the bank says, this company no loan, he will chop you into pieces, no? Because you got no loan, 100% eh? cash, he will chop you, no? Now class, this one I'm going to teach in seven days. Indeed, GST is so important. Nine out of ten news you come across, right? So I'm going to spend a f at least a few hours on this topic in the seven days. Just on GST, I'm going to spend a few hours. I'll teach you how to set up a company? What kind of company to set up? How do you buy with a company? How do you register GST for properties? When do you register? How do you claim back? When do you claim back GST? Plus, how do you bring a company to a bank and still get your up to 80% loan? A lot of agents argue with me. A lot of agents in my class have this three, four, four, six, seven, David, who can? Impossible. I know a lot of bankers. They tell me company maximum 60% loan. You bullshit. You say company 80%. <coughs> I say, I need not bullshit you. I've done it four times myself. I told you I bought five. Huh? I sold away one. 
I took out four loans. I set up four companies to buy the four properties. I'm going to explain to you why in the seven days that one company should only buy one property. Yeah? One company buy three or four properties, you're, you're in trouble. So I set up four companies buy the four properties. And all my four uh, companies loan and they are all 80%. 80 so don't argue with me. I said, agent, please don't argue with me. You a hell, we hell. You know or don't know. So class, I went to teach you. How do you bring a brand new company that you set up, newly set up to buy property to go and get 80, up to 80% loan? All this I will teach you all in the seven days. So you don't end up like this buyer or this agent. And it's a real story. Half a million problem. Okay. Story number one, now I'll give you story number two. Okay? If I don't show you this, you will think that this, could, this is ridiculous. It can never happen, but it happens. Now this family went to buy a HDB shop at that time, a HDB shop was done. It was close to a million dollars at that time. Huh? Now when he go and buy, the agent told him the lease is how many years left? Sixty-two years left. Sixty-two years. Now let me tell you, if you're selling a condo that's sixty-two years left, you can sell away. Can? Almost impossible. The loan is a problem. Yeah, there's no loan. So when there's no loan, who will buy from you? Unless people can buy cash. But how many people will buy cash in Singapore? Huh? The problem is, class, if the bank wants to loan you, uh, but they cannot loan you. Because under the CPF Act, no bank can give you a loan for residential property that's 60 years or less. Strictly no loan. Eh? If you're 62 years, maximum the loan, the bank can only give you two years. But I tell you, the bank will not give you a loan. Eh? Because they can only give you two loans, a two years loan. They can't how to make money from you. Right? They know they only give you two years, two more years alone. Eh? Sixty years after they can they cannot give you more. So you must repay on the loan within two years. You also wanna take a two years loan. Eh? How to how to pay back a two years loan then your installment is gonna be hundred thousand a year. Hundred thousand a month, eh? sorry. <laughs> so you know no one will buy your property one. So they say all the residential, all the all one all go and block. Because they know I cannot find a buyer, so all go all one go and block. But I tell you, commercial property need not worry about over. Commercial 62 years is a hot property. I proved to you. <clears throat> now class, this building, International Plaza, is so hot now. I'm not kidding, this building is so hot now. This building only left 50 years. But selling the hotcakes now. Why? For commercial loan. Every buyer that comes can take 30 years loan. Depending on their age, of course. Every buyer, any buyer come, 30 years loan again. You hold for 5 years, sell again, buyers come, 30 years loan again. So you sell a hot cake. Indeed, I tell you, let me, let me, let me uh, give you another example. Where is the most expensive shop space sold in Singapore? By right, should be Orchard right, Aki Plaza, by right. Right, Lucky Plaza, the front row. Facing Nian City. Right? Let me tell you it's not. Eh? Let me tell you it's where. Lucky Plaza is freehold. Orchard Road. People, many people thought this is the most expensive shop ever sold for square foot. Because Lucky Plaza freehold. Orchard Road. I say it's no. The most expensive shop ever sold in Singapore is People's Park Complex. Left only 50 years. You can see Sunday, you try and squeeze in, you come and squeeze in. Don't believe you can see here Sunday. You come and squeeze in on Sunday. 50 years left, the most expensive PSF because you can fetch such a high renter. Investor worry, worry about what? The next buyer come 30 years, you will buy it. I hope for another 3 years, next buyer come 30 years, you will buy it. So class, <clears throat> commercial property, 50, 60 years left is a hot cake. The family love it. Wow, hot cake. They bought. <coughs> commercial, 60. After they bought, cool. Mike May, when they took over the property, they realized one big problem. What the agent says 62 years left is wrong. The lease only left is 17. See? 62 becomes 17. Can you, can you see? This is poor. Nightmare. Yeah. 17, I tell you, is going back to Akong area. It's a big problem. Yeah? You're going to hand over the lease back to Akong area. <laughs> okay. It's a big problem now. Family very upset. He sued the agent. 
of class. This kind of thing ridiculous, right? But if I don't show you this, you think it's ridiculous, but it happened, right? It really happens. It happens. 62 becomes 17. But how can this thing happen? Now let's examine. Now, in court, the agent said the seller tell me one, man. Of course, the seller say one. But you have gone through RES or CH, right? You know, right? Anything the seller tell you, what must you do before you tell the buyer? You must check and verify before you tell the buyer. As under law, you must do it. One. The seller tell you something, you must check and verify before you can tell the buyer. That agent also go to CR, also go to RES. He obviously know. But why did he check before he tell the buyer? The seller admitted like in court, he remember wrongly because he could manage shop houses. So he thought this is 62 years old, actually 17, he remember wrongly. So he told the agent 62, he remember wrongly. But why didn't the agent check before he tell the buyer, even though he's, tra he's trained to check? He know, Arya said must check. Please check before you tell the buyer. Now I'll show you a case study, you'll straight away know why this thing happened. <coughs> case study one, tomorrow you're selling a condo. You receive the check today, you want to give to the seller tomorrow. But you want to check whether the lease is 62 years or not, right? Confirm, make sure it's 62, not one, don't give the check wrongly. Where do you check how old is the condo? Oh, this class is not property agent, it's insurance agent. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows that. <laughs> so many places like at least your title search, your actually no need to go in this. Ah. No need to waste money. You power search also can find. Condo libraries you can find. And so many places can find out how old is a condo, right? So many places. The finger lost count. You just find out how old is a condo. Wow, seller, you tell me wrongly, yeah. Luckily I didn't give the check, no. Siala. Return the check. Nothing happened. So you know, uh, condo everywhere can find. No problem. Case study number two. Tomorrow you're selling this, you're selling this. Uh. You receive a check already. Oh, you. <coughs> How? Uh? Did the seller tell me wrongly? Uh? Okay. Can I just find out from this class, where do you check how old is a HDB shop house? Some of my graduates have gone through my class. Uh. Maybe no need to share. The rest, please tell me. HDB website. HDB what? Website. Uh? Good. Tonight you go back, huh? you, you tear open the whole website. <laughs> Don't ask me why you ask HGB, I also want to know, I also want to know why. The whole HGB website got only 3 room, 4 room, 5 room. Nothing on commercial, right? Nothing on commercial. Ah, somebody asked me, why do you provide more information? I also don't know, okay? So don't dream. HGB website, nothing on commercial industry. Okay, now, where else can you find? Ah, clever! Aya, make a trip there lah. Huh? You press a number, you can go to Payo or you go branch office. Huh? You press the queue number. Huh? Ding dong, they call your number. Huh? You go forward. Okay, they will be very polite. Huh? They train to be polite. Huh? They will, they will... Sorry, ma'am, yeah, yeah. Jenny's, uh, Jenny, okay. they, they handle Jenny's very polite. But this is what they will say. Huh? This is what they will say. Okay, Jenny's. This one is private seller selling to a private buyer, right? You use a private lawyer, right? You use a private owner. Let me tell you, the lawyer also give the wrong information. They said the court also has the lawyer to pay. Huh? The court also has the lawyer to pay. Huh? The lawyer, his lawyer also give the wrong information. The lawyer also make a mistake. Huh? I tell you, okay, now, never mind. Okay, if you know me, you can call me, huh? but don't know me yet. Huh? Okay, <laughs> but, but you're a manager, right? Last time when I do recruitment, what, 12 o'clock midnight, they call me. Huh? How gay, how? Okay, you're called a manager. Huh? Your manager sincerely want to help you. He said, I only do condo. I do no shop house. Oh, yeah, like. And how? Ah, never mind, huh? very smart method. Let me teach you. Uh. You think David Bo smart or not? <coughs> the shop house downstairs, right? You just have to find out how old is the flat upstairs. Uh. The same block. Uh. Built the same day. Uh. You build it together. Uh. Can right, David Bo, right? Smart, right? Can you do this? <coughs> you just find out how old is the flat upstairs. Uh. You go website, teach website, go, this block is, you know how old? Uh. From this year, 99 years. Right? <coughs> can, uh. can, uh. you can do it. But I tell you, not 99, but 100% sure wrong. Sure wrong. <laughs> why sure wrong? Very simple. Sure, right? It's not 99 years. I tell you why. Even though they are built on the same day, even though the whole block is built on the same day, HDB sold all the flats upstairs for 99 years, so 99 start running day one. They kept the shops downstairs for 20, 30 years. Huh? Do you know about this? Before they start to sell the shop. And when they sell the first batch, they sold on 99 years. Second batch, they sold 60 years. The last batch, they sold only 30 years. So you will never know the shop house downstairs. Huh? 
Which day they start running the 99 years? Or the 60 years? Or the 30 years? You never know. Sorry? You're based on structure. It's not like a shop house that's connected. You're basing on a structure. Sorry, what based on structure? Structure. That means to say commercial and not existingly together with the Rossi. No, HCB is not structure. HCB is not structure. I mean, the quarter is not together with the quarters. The quarters upstairs. The living quarters. Yes, it's normally one title. Yeah. Yes. So what you're trying to say is that it could be like you're talking to just the commercial and not connected with the Rossi. The shop house uh, is always not connected with the resident because it's different uh, age one. Even though it's built on the same day, but your lease start running on a different day. Okay? One is you start running from maybe one 1980. Maybe the shop house start running from 1999, but it's 30 years lease only. So you never know one. what kind of combination is that. <coughs> not class. So the flats up there is never an accurate way to judge the shop house. It's always wrong. So class, that's what you know what happened now. The agent trying to close a deal. He cannot find information, even though he must verify. So when I'm trying to close a deal, you cannot find the information. What do you do? You close first, then you say, right? So you go and meet the seller, right? Seller, you say 62, huh? You look quite honest, huh? You look left, you look right. You look quite honest, huh? I trust you, huh? He give the check. That one check that he trusted, like, cost him a million dollars. Oh my God. Because the seller, he admitted in court, he remember wrong. Mm. 62, 17 becomes 62. But it's so much difference, you know. Yes. Like That's right, fa the family suit. Yeah. If it's only 3 years different, then he probably will not take his kind of action. But 50 years difference. So <coughs> okay. So class, let me tell you this. Eh? It is so important. You must learn where to find information in commercial industry. It's a very different market. It's a very niche market. In condo, everywhere you can find information. But in commercial industrial, you must know where to find. And the good thing is, in the seven days, one of the things, one of the lessons we do is we'll teach you where to find all the answers. You want to check this, please go here. You want to verify this, please confirm here. <coughs> so that you can close, not blindly, but close with confidence your deal. Now, I give you one more real example also. This is another real example. This one also went to court. Eh? Now, this one always happened, one, eh? pay attention. This one always happened, eh? always happened. This not always happen, eh? Two story shop house. One row of shop house, eh? Two story. Restaurant downstairs, restaurant upstairs, eh? <coughs> Now, a buyer came to buy. Okay, let me use this, change the figure, lah. Can I use the same figure? Can I use a different figure? Uh, <coughs> it's a court case, eh? The buyer came and saw restaurant, restaurant, very good business. He bought, let's say, five million. He bought, he bought. So what do you do after you buy? You pay one percent. You exercise, right? After you exercise, what do you do? You pay. You you you, you give to your your your, your uh, lawyer. Say, hey, convincing. After you exercise, he appoint a lawyer. The lawyer straight coin back. Uh, this lawyer is very underboard. This lawyer never make mistake. This lawyer make mistake. Uh. This lawyer never make mistake. He straight pick up the phone and call the buyer. And you tell the buyer, you are in trouble. The buyer say, what trouble? I just bought only you. I appoint you. You tell me I'm in trouble. I have to say sorry, you're in trouble. What trouble? Now class, how many type of shop house we have in Singapore? First type is commercial downstairs, commercial upstairs. Second type, commercial downstairs, residential upstairs. <coughs> the lawyer checked and told the buyer you're in big trouble. The buyer thought it's commercial, commercial. The lawyer said it's not commercial. The buyer had angry, no? This two is different price, one, eh? He thought it's this, eh? Because the agent also thought it's this. The agent said, restaurant, restaurant must be commercial, commercial. So he paid that kind of price for a commercial, full commercial. But it's this, eh? This two is different price, eh? Why? This one, foreigner can buy. This one, foreigner cannot buy. This one, no ABSD, no SSD, eh? This one got ABSD, got SSD, eh? Because this one must pay, eh? Upstairs must pay ABS and SSD, eh? So it's two different price, eh? He paid this. He said, now it's only like that. I'm going to sue the agent. Tell me wrong information. The lawyer said, very sorry. It's not this. It's also not this. Ha <laughs> What did he just bought? The buyer fainted. What did he just bought? He just bought a full residential property. Oh, my God. 
Now, class, in the first place, can a restaurant be in a full residential property? Can I? Always happen. That's why I say don't do commercial blindly. You thought you sold a commercial shop house because it's restaurant, restaurant, but actually it's a residential property. It always happens now. Before I tell you how this thing can happen, let me tell you what's the problem with the agent first, okay? Now, class, if the buyer bought, bought this, what kind of loan is this? Must be commercial loan, nah. How much, how much cash do you need? 20%, right? You need $1 million cash. Correct, nah? yes. Right? You pay $1 million cash, you come. complete the deal. <coughs> if it's this, what kind of loan is this? Half, half? Or follow up this or downstairs? Follow each Okay. <coughs> no, class, this is I tell you. Uh, <coughs> as long as commercial is involved, uh, it is so easy to squeeze through any loans. Because there's no cooling measures on commercial. Let me tell you, the bank also want to loan you maximum money. But the government said for residential cannot, 50% max. So they will, I tell you, the bank will lump the loan into a commercial loan. Right? You get 80% one. Yes, you will get 80% one. He will put all this loan under downstairs one. Right? He will give you a commercial loan. Right? Yeah, because this two is one property. Right? Correct. Right? So he put, he lump the loan here, he get 50%. If you lump the loan here, he give you 80%. He make more interest. The bank also happy, you happy or happy. So this one is still 80% loan, one million dollar. <coughs> the cash you must pay. What loan is this? Must be residential loan, like how to pay. The bank also don't know how to make magic. Is it the bank say how to make magic for you? Residential means residential. La. So it can only give you 15% loan plus a 7% APSD. Eh. You need almost 3 million. Eh. The buyer say, seller, I'm so sorry. I thought it's $1 million cash. Now it's $3 million. I don't have enough cash. Cannot complete. The, the seller say, what's going to do with me? What was the In the OTP, you said you put out $5 million, you're going to pay me, right? Do I have to bother whether how much loan and how much cash? How you split the loan and cash? No, my problem is the seller, right? You put out $5 million, you pay me $5 million. Whether you get, give cash or loan, I don't care. The seller sue the buyer, the buyer sue the agent. So the agent, five million problem. Now class, how can this thing happen? Simple. <coughs> Don't assume, uh, even hotels, hotels, restaurants must be commercial property. Many are residential, some even industrial property. How can this thing happen? Because we have a good government, we have a good policy called change of use. The government always allowed change of use of, a, of the property that you own, subject to approval. Commercial can convert the resi, resi can convert commercial one. For example, <coughs> now if you live in, let's say, okay, if you live in Dilliton, Farrell, uh, who are beautiful 1,000 plus condo upstairs, right? You own a three bedroom condo in Dilliton. Can you apply the URA and convert <laughs> your three bedroom condo into a Tsa store? <laughs> can I? No. Can I? You already will say you apply law, but subject to my approval, right? You apply law. <laughs> Correct. I tell you, you already say you apply. But I tell you, they will, they will come and tell you, no. rejected. How can you let you let your sister store there while all the smoke come out, then people all come and complain, correct or not? So, don't dream. <laughs> but shop house, many times they get approval. Why? Because you don't disturb a neighbor one for shop house. People go into your unit directly, even. You know what I'm trying to say? Because you have your own access, right? you don't disturb your neighbor. Not a condo, how you pass by your neighbor, go to Sister's house there. You just go in straight away. Right? So many times they approve one. So let me tell you, don't think all the hotels, restaurant, offices you see along the shop house are all commercial. Many are residential, some even industrial. This thing happened most in where? Singapore. <clears throat> Geylang. Uh. Always happen in Geylang. Class, let me tell you, I've seen so many agents die in Geylang. They didn't die in a hotel, okay? they die buying and selling property there. I've seen so many, no? because if you don't attend this class, you may even thought that Geylang are all commercial properties. Right? Because what do you see for the last 50 years? Shops. What do you see for the 50 years? You see hotels, hotels, backpack inns, restaurants, shops, correct? Temple, all kind of things in, in, in all the lorongs, right? Everyone thought Geylang is commercial zone. But let me tell you, it's not, it's the opposite. 
only the two front row that's fronting the Geylang Main Road is zoned fully commercial. In all the lorongs, 1 to 40 plus, all the lorongs, eh, from the very first to the last unit, eh, they are fully zoned residential. Ground floor also zoned residential. But the government always allowed change of use in Geylang for 50 years. That's why the, everyone thought, agent was thought it's commercial. Now, will you change it? You will change one, no? I'll give you an example. You have this apartment in Geylang. Your apartment, your neighbor apartment. You rent out for residential, 3,000 grand you collect. <clears throat> your neighbor changed the use to Tsa store. He collect 10,000. Will you, will you change? <laughs> of course, la, same apartment there. <laughs> he 10,000, I 3,000, I'll sure change also. Like, change, la. So government allow you change in Geylang. The problem is, <clears throat> The change of use, even approved, means who can use. Now commercial can use, right? When you buy and sell, the government don't care who use. The government only care if this is zone residential, you sell as residential. If this is zone commercial, you sell as commercial. Class, let me tell you, <coughs> I've seen a big case in Geylang. A lawyer friend told me, this buyer went to buy a hotel, you know? In many lorongs, uh, they tear down the shop house and build a new hotel block. Uh. Really a story one. Eh. You know the hotel 80, what one, you know? Uh. A real big hotel newly built. Eh. He went to buy the hotel, 30 million. Eh. Completion, uh, the lawyer sent the invoice for ABST. <laughs> the buyer received ABST, 15%, 4.5 million. Eh. He called the lawyer, he called the lawyer. You first day lawyer, I bought hotel, where got ABST? Hotel, eh. The lawyer told him, the use is hotel. Even if you rebuild into a hotel, the use is hotel. But the building remain a residential building. He fainted. 4.5 million buyer. <clears throat> so let me tell you, these are so many cases that agents cannot handle because they thought, they thought it's like that. It's not. not class. Very simple. Before you close the case, where do you check is this residential or commercial or even industrial? Don't look at the user. Use are always deceiving. You must look at this zone as what kind of property. If it's residential, you sell as residential. Now class, where do you check this? Good. Master plan. It's even free. Don't you pay one. I've asked many agents, go master plan and check before you close deal. They check. He says, David, I scared. Why are you scared? Because they have never learned how to read the master plan. If you read wrongly, tomorrow you're going to close wrongly, no. So class, <coughs> this is how much we go into it in seven days. We don't just share with you where to check and find answers. We teach you how to read them. Example, we're going to share, we're going to share about an hour, teaching you how to read the master plan. So after you go through, you know, if I see this, means it's commercial, can close, no worry. We're going to share with you even how to read <coughs> information that you require and not just where to find that's how detailed we go through you now okay <coughs> now let me share with you more details about the seven days program and also who has gone through our who has gone through our our, our, our programs and make millions eh? now do you know and also in the seven days program we will share with you many ways how you can convince an investor why they should invest in commercial and industrial real estate eh? okay now, we have a solution that if you want to uh, learn and how to be a good commercial industrial agent, I have this seven days program called a professional program in commercial industrial <coughs> real estate marketing. Okay, it's organized by my company. I've, now, I'm more than 20 years in training agents. I've trained thousands of agents. Many top agents I've trained remain top agents today. Kevin Fong, Janet Lim, Dominic, CJ, many, Richard Tan, many more, okay, Loyal. Now, what do we teach? Eh? We share the practical aspects and approaches on how you can, you can be a good commercial industrial agent. Okay, in module number one. Okay, uh, okay maybe let me, let me tell you what, what, do you, what do you learn in the module one. One, uh, one, I teach you about cash flow. You must learn about cash flow. Uh. In commercial property, you must learn cash flow. Then we also teach you about uh, what kind of company you set up, how do you set up a company, how do you buy with a company, how do you register GST, when to register GST, how do you claim a GST, how do you bring a company to a bank and still get your 80% loan. All this will be in under module number one. Two. Fundamentals means your technical knowledge. Ah, uh, change of use. We're gonna teach you change of use. You better learn, no? Many seller, many sellers say, hey, change the use of me. How, how, how to change? We will teach you change of use, we teach you master plan, we teach you how to check this. Anything that's technical one, we cover under module number two. Okay.
Okay, now order number three. The strategy investment process in short SIP, first part, second part, cost what's invest. Now, if you ask me, David, which is the most important module? Let me tell you all are important. But if you allow me to pick one, I would say module number three is the most important. Why? Even though the rest are also important. Now, my class is not designed, no, sorry, my class is designed to start all of you with commercial industry. You go through, you sure can start. But it's not full stop. My class is also designed to make many agents make 3,000, half a million, one million dollar a year. The skills you need to make the million dollar a year are mainly in SIP. So if you want to make half a million, one million a year selling commercial, SIP becomes very important to you because these are the skills that the top investor know. You better learn so that you can deal with them. So they can, they can, you can sell the 20 million property or whatever. So SIP to me is the skills you need to handle all the top investors for you to make your half a million, one million dollar year. Second part, how sorts to invest? <coughs> your client said, I got one million, do you know what to buy? What can you buy one million? Your client said, I want to buy office. Can I buy Jurong office? You must know, right? D1, D2 and Jurong, what's the difference? Your client say, must I buy Little India? Can I buy Chinatown? You must know what's the difference between Chinatown and Little India. Really, the shop house, what's the difference? We're gonna, I'm going to share all this with you under hotspot to invest. I'm going to spend one afternoon to tell you one million, what can you buy? Buy office, where must you bring your client to? Factory, must you go to Rome or you can buy here? Shop house, what's the difference between Little India and Chinatown? So you're going to learn all this from me. Now you can serve any buyers that come to you. One million, buy one. Five million, buy one. Twenty million, can buy one. So you become all around them. Okay. Model number four, prospecting the market. Don't worry about it. I know most of you say, David, I have no leads at all. I have no seller, no buyer. Don't worry about it. This is why you have me. I know most of you start from zero commercial. Most of you. In model number four, I'm going to spend one whole day with you. Where do you find your buyer? Where do you find your seller? Where do you find your tenant? Where do you find your landlord? And how do you market your services to them? And how do you market your property to them? I'm going to spend one day on this in module 4. Now, 5. External learning. I'll teach you things beside, beyond the textbook. I'll teach you Malaysia market, I'll teach you Hong Kong market, I'll teach you a lot of other markets. I love case studies. I love case studies. I will use real cases, real photos taken, real address given to you. If you bring your client to buy this kind of property, lose money. Why do you lose money? If you bring your client to buy this kind of property, make money. Why they make money? I'm going to give you real case studies. Now, who should I attend? Agents who think, hey, should I do commercial now? We will convince you why you must do commercial in the seven days and we'll teach you how to do commercial. Or agents who already decided, yes, I will do commercial again, who teach you? You know your agency don't teach you commercial. RES also don't teach you commercial. Your manager will teach you, but he don't know commercial. So again, we teach you, uh, we teach you the commercial. You no, know, it's really a true fact. Uh, many of your managers are good managers. They want to they teach you, but they, they don't know how to teach you. Because they don't do it. Huh? So we teach you. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, some of them uh, who came to my class, they already started a commercial. They started already. But they always felt lost. It's true, huh? when you got questions, where to ask? Now, plus, not to impress you, but to impress upon you. I'm very confident in this. These people, once they go through my seven days, they will never be lost anymore. Never, never be lost anymore. I tell you why. Not to impress you, but to impress upon you. Let me repeat. I'm the only trainer in the market that after the seven days, we give you free, free, really free. I don't take your commission. Weekly training. Michael, you see me weekly. Will you ever get lost? You mean you don't know how to ask me questions? You see me weekly. How can you be lost anymore? You see me, I see you more often than your manager, no? And I tell you, uh, many who have joined my program six years, I run this for seven years. Eh? Many who joined my program seven years ago are still in my weekly training. Until today, seven years of free training I give them. They are still enjoying the free training and I still don't take that cut. So how can you be lost? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I don't do recruitment. You know, I retired from uh, recruitment uh, 10 years ago. That's why I leave all to Kevin Fong. I, I don't do recruitment anymore. I don't recruit people. And so anyone work with me 
from any agencies. Man. You don't need to resign and join me. I don't, anyway, I don't, I don't recruit anymore. You just cannot join me anymore. <laughs> really, people say want to join me, I say please go and look for him. I, I, I don't recruit anymore. So anyone, I'm going to share with you how later. Okay, now, let me finish this one two page first. Huh? Then I'll come back and share with you how all of you from any Roja agency, any agency, you can be part of my team to enjoy my free weekly training after the seven days. And you will never be lost anymore. But let me go on with these two pictures. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> now, oh, some of the agents are doing very well. No, I, I want an agent. Then. Oh, wrong agent, sorry. Graduates. He's an office top seller. He sells office by floor by floor. One. You know, sometimes he sells one floor 30 million. One. He sells one floor 30 million. 300,000 commission. <coughs> he come to my class. I say, you so good, still come. Hey, David, don't say this. When I started commercial, no one teach me I'm so unprofessional. Now you teach me how to sell professionally. Plus, once I learn commercial from you, I can teach my very brand new agent how to start commercials. I teach them also, so I can't, okay? More, agents who always do a wrong thing at the wrong time, you learn how to break through by doing the correct thing. Next, most of you are here, residential agents. You know your income is dropping. Or, you now believe me. Even your income is increasing, but you know a hurdle is down the road. July, August, very soon. If the market continue to grow so fast in residential, you will hear something from the government. You know it's a big hurdle. And how do you increase your income again? You do it through commercial sales. Now, <coughs> ask yourself this. Huh? Are you ready if the market you are in now changes suddenly? You know it may change. I'm, I'm, I'm warning you. Uh, look up for changes in July and August. Uh. It's too fast. Uh. Every quarter, 3 low percent is too fast. Uh. It is what happened in 2010. Zero one, zero zero. That's why they came up with all cooling measures. Okay? <clears throat> then, when something happened again, do you have new things to do? Uh? You better learn something new now. And you know, commercial will still be good for 3-4 years. I'll tell you why. Uh. Very simple. They will still hold the residential market very tightly for at least two to three more years. Why? Why? Because the election. Class. The election is two years down the road. Before the election, they will never let the property price skyrocket, right? Then you vote against them. They will never let that because it happened in 2011. Do you remember 2015? The property price is sweet, right? They get the highest vote, right? Eh? One of the highest vote in history, right? Eh? So they will continue to do it, right? Property price sweet sweet, you give me vote la. like that, la. shoot so high, bye-bye. So class, they will hold it at least after the next election one, then there's a chance they'll leave it one. So when you hold it for another two, three years for the election, you only force the buyer and buy commercial. You only force the buyer and buy commercial. What am honestly class? <clears throat> one of my friends recently he so HD, HDB. He don't live in the HDB la. he lives in his condo. Recently he sold his HDB flats. He received a few hundred thousand cash. He asked me what to buy. I say you want to. <coughs> he said residential can and the price can't going up can buy. I say you want to buy then later got cooling measure. I leave it to you. Then, then how? I say you buy an office. He 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 just bought an uh, IP office last week. Eh? He just bought an IP IP office last week. Eighty percent loan. Eighty percent loan. Indeed, he got two property. Already. His DDSR is order already. But I still get the loan through for him. I told you commercial is much easier. 80% somehow. <clears throat> you put the money in commercial, no EBAC, no SD, no worry, rental so good. Then no need about what coding matches. I'm not I'm not kidding, no. People are really putting money in commercial. Because it's the easiest choice, easiest, no need to pay money. <coughs> so you have the, the measures, coding measures in a residential will only force people to buy more commercial in the next few years. <coughs> Sorry. Do you I'm think that yes? Just question. Mm. I mean you mentioned about the office. Mm. So um Yes, although it's uh, commercial, but more about the, the supply and demand. Supply because is very thin. Yes. Next few years, uh, there's no supply. But, no uh, new supply. We still see, like, I mean, <coughs> offices, you know, retail, like, even in the commercial offices, retail, like, we do see quite a lot of these things from some of the developers, like, you know, FI, CDL, they are still increasing of these spaces. I mean, it's still very competitive, and the take up rate is also a concern. Because it's very 
know same piece of pie. So yes, although uh, because a uh, marketing one which is at Oxley Tower, the office. Okay. Bought, Oxley Tower cannot rent one. Eh? <laughs> In my seven days, I'll so, teach you. It's one of my case study. You know, yeah. three four years ago, I tell people don't buy Oxley Tower. All these people now believe me. Cannot rent one. It's my case study. Uh, eh? He bought a retail. So trying to market to rent. But he has been dropping the price. Okay, I, honestly, I tell you, honestly, I tell you, Janice, <laughs> you may take another one or two more years, you still may not be a fine and ten. Mm. Because Oxy Tower, even whether the shop or the office cannot rent, I'm going to explain to you in the seven days. In the first place, they already done it wrongly in, in the day one day. It's one of my case study. So don't take Oxy Tower as as one of your, your example, uh, office not renting. Because the building itself cannot rent out. I'll explain to you why in my seven days. It's my, it's, it's, it's my, it's a very famous case study that I do. Everyone says, ah, now I know why I cannot rent shops or office or cannot rent office towers. So, Which is weird because SBF is just next door and then you have Oxy. But I think SBF is picking up better than Oxy. Very fast, SBF. So, it's picking up very fast. Yeah, so I think, very simple. Very, very simple. I give you one, I give you, straight away, I give you one reason, man, but I give you more reason on the day. Do you know that Oxy Tower, all the offices are round? How you rent out round office? Will you rent an office as round one? Will you rent an office as round one? Siao, how do I take out my room, man? My, how to sit the people? You know, round office, you don't waste a lot of space. Because all the corner can I use is round one, eh? You know, office towers, they're all round office. Rounded office, there. Eh? One reason really cannot run, cannot rent. Will you rent a round office? How do you how do you lay out the rooms? You mean the wall also follow the uh, round wall? You can build a round wall. Eh? The first place, the, the design is really wrong. How do you, how can you, Right now, a round office. I told people, don't buy. You're going to have problem renting out. It's a round one. They don't believe me. Now they believe me. Okay, <clears throat> now, class. So, I'll, I'll do more. I'll give you more reason in my seven days uh, why Oxy Tower got a problem. Uh. Now, class. On the average, uh, now most office buildings are sitting on 90 over percent occupancy. Mm -hmm. Most office buildings. Class is a very, very high supply. And there's no major office project coming on in the next few years. That's a problem with office. <clears throat> That's why in the next few years, office is going to be very good. Shop house, why, why very good? Because it's zero supply. No more supply for shop house. Every year, more and more rich want to buy shop house. But you don't get supply, but demand goes up. So shop house keep on going up. Because rich, rich man want to buy shop house because you own the land. Shop house is a bungalow, you own the land. You own the land. So shop house and office, these are two things you should be doing if you are worried about shops because they are affected by e-commerce. Okay, now let's discuss this. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> so, now, <coughs> I'm going to share with you now <coughs> what I say just now. All of you, when you go through my seven days, you, you enjoy this program called the seven plus one, the eight ways I call it the post program system. How I support your sales after, after the seven days, how I support your sales. Eh? Including my weekly training that you will never be lost anymore. I'm the only one who give this in the market. No one gives this count. Everyone, after the course, bye-bye. But for me, after the course, I work with them some seven years. Okay. Now, what do I do after the course? Okay. First, is my front monthly e-learning. <coughs> now, e-learning. Every month, I will have an e-learning session. You need not worry that you, are, you cannot attend because you are closing a deal. My staff will videotape a two to three hours training. I'll continue to do training for you on commercial, industrial, and market updates. And I'll post this training on my website every month. You are given a password to watch my EEL training every month. Even though you're overseas, you can come home and watch it because there's no rush. It's an e-learning. I've done this for the last seven years. I continue to train my agents with all this e-training, okay? And not, I don't just <clears throat> give them market updates or e-learning or whatever. I will also shortlist projects for them to market. Now, for example, Jenny, which agency are you from? MCG. MCG, okay. You probably know what MCG is launching. They'll teach you all the projects they launch. But what, do you know how to launch, sell Promnex project? No, because they will never teach you. They say you're competitors. Ma'am, can I have a name, please? Arene. Arene, which agency are you from? Promnex. Promnex, good. You know how to sell all the Promnex projects because they say you sell for me. But do you know how to sell ERA project? No. 
you say, no, you are my competitors, so I'm my dad you. That's a problem. That's a real problem. You only end up selling, pushing your own agency projects. But you must admit that uh, there are a lot of projects uh, that are by other agencies also very hot selling, but you don't know how to push them. Uh, because they, you got, don't have power point, you don't know, don't know how to sell. <clears throat> I will help you solve this problem. The essential, I'll leave it to your manager to do it for you. They should do it for you. Commercial, I will do you this. I'll scrap around for good commercial launches. Whether they're launched by Hutton's Orange Tea, not my business. I don't care. If it's good, I say, Hutton's come. Orange Tea come. You already come. I mean, teach my graduates how to sell them. They will come. Huh? They will not go from as they teach you. They will not go AMG and teach you because it's a competitor's agency. But they will come here. You know why? Because I'm a school. I'm not an agency. Eh? We've got CA license number. I'm a school. I'm a training school. Oh, can my boss say can go to training school? They will come. They will teach you how to sell the projects. And I, think, I don't take a cut, because CEA don't allow three-way. You work with them, they pay you directly. But I give you a platform to learn other agencies' project. First. <coughs> All this I do for you. I don't take a cut for the <coughs> For the last seven years, I run my training, and I don't take a cut from you. Don't ask me, I've done that, I've done that for seven years. Now, that's my monthly training. More. Next is my, the second thing I'm going to do with you is the commercial elite team. This is the Rojak team, I say. Eh? Rojak one. Eh? You need not resign. See, there's no, no CA number. This is not an agency. Eh? This is just a team of agents from Rojak agencies. After my course, they come together to co broke to help each other buy and sell and rent. Now, I call it the commercial elite team. Once you join a commercial team after my program, <coughs> I now give you weekly training. No more money, weekly. Maybe even more than your manager who overrides you. Every Monday, we meet at Topayo. Every Monday, 12 to 2, Topayo. On this weekly training, it's a, this is no more e-training, it's a face-to-face. -face, eh? Monday, we meet at Topayo. <coughs> we now see you weekly. <coughs> we train you, we continue to train you on commercial industrial. We arrange prospecting for you. We give you branding. What, what does branding mean? Uh? Now, this logo, uh, this logo. Uh. If you join this team, uh, I will give you your permission to print this small logo uh, onto your name card. Uh. Like, let's say you hold Promax name card. Uh. As soon as your agency allows, uh, you can print my, my this logo at the corner. Uh, Raining, right? Raining, eh? Raining, eh? Raining, when you can see your client, you give your Promax name card. Uh. Oh, Raining, you're from Promax. Uh. Then you say, hey, you are commercial elite team. Uh. Oh, you are trained in GST. Ah, you know change of use. Ah. I follow you. This what my CEP member told me. Eh. This one become automatic branding. Eh. I need not even tell my client I'm trained. I'm trained in commercial. They say I'm trained in commercial. They feel comfortable to follow you. Branding. <clears throat> All these things I do for you, really. <clears throat> still, I don't take a cut from your commission. I still don't take a cut from I've done this for the last six years. Okay. I've run this, we have run this weekly training for the last five, six years. Okay. So again, don't ask whether we will do that. I'm plus. But you must be fair to me, eh? and fair to this 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 team eh, that it comes every week. Eh? Why I say so? Eh? Now, I run this training for six, seven years. It's not zero cost, eh? there's cost. Eh? Money training, I've been bearing the cost for the last seven years, honestly. The money training. But the weekly training is very expensive. Eh? In the first place, who's going to pay for the renter? Because these are Rochak agents. Why must Proplex let you, someone from ERA or Hutton's use his room? Who's going to take care of this? Next. Who's going to take care of all the PowerPoint for training? I have one full-time CPF staff uh, to take care of this team. There's a few hundred agents. Every week, prepare PowerPoint, do this, do that, text you, come for training. A full-time staff. Who's going to pay for the salary? I pay salary, you keep the commission. Okay, right? 
<coughs> it's not one month, no? it's seven years. There are a lot of costs involved for this weekly training. So this team has come together and agreed. David, you train us, you organize for us, but we are very happy. Yet. You should not be paying for the cost because you don't make from us. We keep on the commission. So this team has agreed to share their own cost. I will run the training, but they will share the cost. Now, how much is the training? How much is the cost? <coughs> I will never <coughs> force you to join it because you will never make me a millionaire by taking your few dollars every training. The few dollars that you pay goes to pay for all the costs for all this training, and you keep all the commission. Every chunk, one training you attend is about five, six dollars. So please don't bargain three dollars, Canada. I think of five dollars, I thought I can never can be like Aaron, trust me. <laughs> okay, or oh, it's a cover cost, huh? But I will never force you to join this because this is volunteer. Okay, there are two ways, two things you can do. If you want to share cost, you obviously you can choose to join this training weekly. If you don't want to share cost, never mind, you can still. I'll still do the money training with you. Okay? Either either one of this, I don't take our commission, you keep our commission. Now, <coughs> the third thing I'm gonna do for you is your CET property portal. It is like your guru, like your ST property. Now, guru is good, huh? so please use them. Then then why do you still want to, why do I still want to do one for you? I I've done one portal only for my graduates to post listings. Only my graduate can post listing here. Why? Simple. When you start to do commercial, you realize one real problem. One real problem. In residential, 99% are exclusive listing, right? Owner given exclusive. In commercial industrial, it's the opposite. 99% are open listing. You like it now, it's a culture. They don't they don't sign exclusive right? commercial industry. In that, don't worry. Eh? I prefer to close open listing. I'm going to teach you how to close open listing very fast in my seven days program. After that, you enjoy doing it more happier, easier, faster than exclusive listing. Trust me. So don't worry about open listing. I'll teach you how to close them fast. But let's let us face the fact because they are all open listing. So agents are worried to crew book with you. Why? Because if I show you the property tomorrow, my girl know which unit already, right? My girl can do direct, what can I do? You can't do anything because it's an open listing. Right? I can go to the owner, he also can go to the owner. You know what I'm trying to say? Eh? So, agents don't want to call with you. They don't know you, eh? they think you'll go behind them. Eh? So, when Rene called them, I am not free, every day not free. There's a real problem. Eh? <clears throat> so, what do I do? I built a portal just for my graduates. Only my graduates can post the thing here. Now, what's the difference? Now, if Michael call me from this portal, oh Michael, you see it here. Oh, you call me from the CT portal, okay. So now straight away, I know Michael is David Post graduate. Because only my graduate can post here. So Michael asked to see some property that's under me inside here. I will cooperate with Michael. You know why? Because I know if I show you the property tomorrow, if you go behind me, I can send a text to David Po. David Po, please back this Michael. He go behind me. <laughs> My, David Po will send a WhatsApp to all his graduates. Tomorrow, all his graduates will know that don't call with you anymore. <laughs> because I can control this portal. Guru, I cannot control for you, right? You go behind someone, uh, complain also no use. But this one, you complain to me, I will take action. So you 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 scared you fear right? You fear right? if I go behind them, my name blacklist. I have no point. I just co broke. So because of this, you know you can co broke safely. The one who seen through you, seen through you, will also stick with you and will not go behind you because it's a small circle of agents. I can control this agent and send out taxes to blacklist you. Class, <clears throat> how much does Guru charge you now? <laughs> One thousand eight, right? I heard. Huh? <coughs> I pay for the programming. I pay for the monthly maintenance. And I also must pay programmer and not install free. I don't know how to do that. I really have to know how to do that. I pay for the programming. I pay for the money maintenance. I pay for the yearly upgrading. And I tell you, class, Guru charge you one thousand eight a year. My CET member post inside here for free. Oh, free. Now you must 
agree with me. Eh? The only reason why am I doing this eh? is because you've gone through my seven days program. I want you to do well. No other reason. Eh? No other reason why I must do all this. Eh? I don't take a cut from a commission. And you post here for free. Right? The only reason because I really sincerely want you to do well after my program. That's why we are doing this for you. Because this is free for my CE team members. We do it free for them. So now they have the chance to grow. Plus, another very good function inside here. This function is so helpful to a lot of agents uh, who just started commercial. Now, Michael, you may have a lot of residential listing, but when you first started commercial, you got zero listing commercial. Zero, because you just started. Now, your client say, I want to view some shop houses. Then how? You don't have shop house listing. Uh, just started. Don't worry. When Michael joins Porter, I will give Michael two passwords. Uh, one is for Michael to lock in as an agent. Lock in as agent. He came here, he go in, he see all these things. David Paul, Stephen, Tom, all these things you see here, like Guru, all these things. Another password I give to you is for you to give to your customer. And your customer lock in as a guest. When he lock in as a guest using your password, your guest password, the whole portal will become his personal website. Can you imagine the whole guru uh, all changed your name? David, 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 all the listing, David, uh, David, 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 next page, David, 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 next page, David, what, David, you got 1,000 listing, uh, yeah? 1,000 listing. The whole portal will change your name. Uh. Your client can only see your name. Anyone he picks is your name only, your, your handphone. Uh. He will call you, Michael, what, you got 1,000 listing, uh, can you show me these five? Uh, Michael will quickly can check the five, uh, who are the Cobra agents. Michael version will show who are the corporate agent, but your client version will only show all your name. Beautiful, right? Now you can start to serve any buyer anytime. And we do it this for you for free. Okay, class. Sorry, but when you close, you know there's another agent there. Right? <coughs> Sorry? When you close, the, the, the buyer will be another agent there, right? Always, what's the issue? No problem. No, what's the issue? No problem. But he only goes through you, huh? right? He, he sees he see, he see you, right? Does the buyer want to care whether Anyway, the commission is paid by the seller, not paid by me. Who you want to co-roll, I don't care, but I see through you. So you only make the buyer see through you. you don't, the buyer cannot see through any other agent. Okay? <coughs> now, okay, this is something that we change the interview slightly. Uh. You go in, you see a lot of this thing. Uh. Okay. The next thing, the fourth thing, the fourth way how we, how we support your sales. Uh. Okay? <coughs> now, there are top four foreigners Buyers in Singapore, which which for what? Chinese, Malaysians, Indonesians. Indonesians, and Indians. The other three you'll find yourself. I'm going to help you find Chinese buyers. How do I help you find Chinese buyers? In the first place, why do you? Why must you find Chinese buyers? Now, class, let me share with you why you should find Chinese buyer. Now, this building, Springleaf Tower, they sold away twelve floors for twenty-five million each floor. And I tell you, out of 12 buyers, 8 buyers are Chinese. This shopping mall, 1.1 B, yes, next to Paragon opposite Mandarin Hotel, sold to Chinese. The sale, 1,000 over condos upstairs, downstairs got 22 shops, all sold to Chinese. 14 floor, Samsung Hub, 3030 PSF, one whole floor, 39.7 mil, sold to a Chinese. You like it or not, you better find them. You better find them. Okay, class. <coughs> and let me tell you, more and more Chinese are moving their money out of the country to buy properties. Eh? Why? Two reasons. You like it or not? I deal with Chinese for years. Eh? I, I've been in China since 1991. I work with a lot of Chinese investors and, and Chinese uh, 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 partners. Now, class, the more they clamp down on corruption, the more they want to move the money out of the country. Fear, right? Because they feel safer if somehow my money is already out of the country, I can, anything I can run. Eh? <coughs> First, secondly, who has heard of this thing called CRS? CRS. As I class, you don't mind seeing this, huh? I always tell agents when you watch TV, don't just watch a drama. Watch a bit on news. When you read newspaper, don't just read on Zhou Jianlun. Read a bit on what the news. All this news that you know will make you make more money. On I give you an example. You don't even know CRS. You know CRS are helping a lot of agents make a lot of money today. But you don't even know CRS. Now what is CRS? <coughs> Common Reporting System. Now class, 
for years. Let's say, let's say you, are, let's say you are, I know you're Singaporean, but let's say you are Indian origin, eh? you are an Indian citizen. You pump 10 million in OCBC account in Singapore. Does Indian government know you have 10 million in Singapore? He will never know. Never know. So he cannot tax your money. Your 10 million, no tax one. Because the government don't, don't know your 10 million outside the country, you cannot tax. Okay? Let's say you're, let's say you're Chinese. <coughs> you're from Beijing. You got 50 million in one of our local banks. <coughs> 50 million. You think the Chinese government will know? They will never know. So your 50 million will never be taxed. For years, this thing happened, right? And this is really what happened, right? You just park your money out of the country. The government cannot tax your money anymore because the government don't, don't even know you got this money around. This has happened for years, so the world has came together. The world has come together to do one thing called common reporting system. The world got tired of all this. The government, not the world, the governments of the world got tired of all this. They now want to tax their citizens' money because they say crazy, right? All my people can put the money out of the country, I can't tax them. So now they have this thing called common reporting system. It means if you have 10 million in a Singapore bank. Singapore bank now under law must report to IRAS, the Newton, uh, Novena Newton, IRAS must report. You got 50 million in the Singapore bank. The Singapore bank must report to IRAS in Novena. Lin Xiaotong got 50 million in my bank account. The bank also must report to IRAS. You got 50, 10 million, blah blah blah, your name. Same thing happened in China. Any Singaporeans who keep money in Chinese uh, uh, bank account, in China bank account, the Chinese bank must report to the Chinese IRAS. David Paul got 10 million in my bank account. Same thing in India. Any Singaporean keep money in an Indian bank, eh? the Indian bank must report to the Indian IRAS. So and so from Singapore got 20 million in my bank account. Once a year. All the IRAs will exchange information. Singapore IRAs will exchange with Indian IRAs. You will tell Singapore IRAs all the Singaporeans that put money in your country. The Singapore IRAs will tell all, tell Indian IRAs all the Indians that put money in Singapore. Once a year, the Chinese IRAs and the Singapore IRAs will also exchange information. The Chinese IRAs will tell all the Singapore IRAs all the Singaporeans that put money in China. The Singapore IRAs will tell the Chinese IRAs all the Chinese that put money in Singapore. So now, everything is transparent. You cannot hide money anymore. Anywhere you put the money in the world, very soon your government, your own government back home will know. They can start taxing the money. This is called a common reporting system, CRS. The problem, or not the problem, there's one loophole. What's the loophole? Any money you deposit in a bank, any investment you make in a bank, <coughs> any financial products you make to the bank, or will have to be reported to IRAS. <coughs> that means your government at home will know how much money you have, how much money you make. There's only one thing that's exempted from CRS. What is it? Property investment. So now, your money in Singapore Bank now, right? Very soon, your Indian government will know, eh? Because the Singapore EOB must tell the IRAs in Singapore in Novena, Novena will tell the one in uh, 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 India, he will know, hey, you can tell me that I want to tax you. So you, what must you do now? Yes, take out the 10 million and buy property. Then the money is no more transparent anymore. Because property investment is not reported to IRAs. Property investment is so far not part of CRS. So what do you do as a Chinese? Take out the money in Singapore and buy property, right? You put in a bank, your government will tax you. Leh. You take out money buy property, your government will never know. That is why class. Do you know why in the last one year or so, there are so, most of the property markets are so hot? New York, London, Australia. Because people are taking out the money to buy properties. Hong Kong. You know Hong Kong? Why so hot? One of the reasons is CRS. Because the Chinese Put the money in Hong Kong now, you better take a buy property if not the government tax them the money. Because of CRS, a lot of property markets are now very hot because you have to take out your money from a bank to buy properties. And I tell you, you better find all these Chinese. They have a lot of cash in Singapore. They will buy property. 
they have to buy property next one two years. If not, they will, their money will be taxed very soon. So find them. Indians find yourself. I do not know how to deal with them. I don't know where to find them. But Chinese, I will help you. Huh? <coughs> how do we help you? <coughs> I have a Chinese elite program. Huh? What do we do? Huh? <coughs> now in the Chinese elite program, we already gone to China for the last three to four years, ten, eleven rounds. We have gone seven times to Shanghai, I think. Three times to Guangzhou, one time to Hangzhou. What do we do? Before you, we send you to China, we're going to train you for two days in Singapore. You will train for two days in Singapore. We will train you on how to deal with Chinese. What to say to them. What to sell to them. When they say this, they mean what? When they say this, they mean they want to buy or don't want to buy. So we train you for two days in Singapore. After that, we're going to send you to China. <clears throat> We're going to rent a big property booth in China, the major cities, in all the property expo. Real big booth. I'll show you the real photo shortly. We will fly up a few days before you. We will renovate the booth for you. Because if you use two pole, one red banner, no one walking in. In Chinese, everything must be grand. I'll show you really renovate the booth. Huh? Beautiful, or M we got MES model, huh? very beautiful and okay. So that. Oh, we also be there, not just renovate a booth for you. Eh? We will be there to print Chinese flyers for you. If you bring your English flyer, go up, no one understand because they say, I don't understand. Bye bye. So we go there and print Chinese flyers for you. You just have to fly up one day before the expo. Spend three to four days in expo. Talk to Chinese who walk past the booth or walk into the booth. On average, they come back, the graduate told me. Eh? They collected 40 to 60 Chinese leads. And you know now, uh, once you collect Chinese leads, you can call them for free to WeChat. Like, it's really free. Eh? You can call them and text them for free. Now, class, you must go there and find them. i tell you why. Because when they arrive in Singapore, we have no more chance. Because when they go to Property Guru, they got 30,000 Asian to choose from. Why must they choose you? So you must know them from there in the Property Expo. Oh my girl, oh you're from Singapore. Hey, okay, okay. Now I know you. Hey, next month I'm going to Singapore for a meeting. You show me property can ah. That's of course you're speaking in Mandarin, huh? <coughs> that is why they'll be here to look for you. And they will follow you because you know them in Shanghai. They come here to look for you. Now class, <coughs> before then I said lamb chips, eh? The very first trip that one of the agents followed us there, he went I think three, four years ago. Last year I bumped to him. I asked him how many Chinese buyers he has closed so far after the trip. He told me he already closed 30 over Chinese buyers. 30 over. Many has gone up and closed many deals. And they are not small deal. I hope one of the agents closed a $15 million property, one five. So it's not small deal. They are not small deal. Okay, now class. <clears throat> Let me show you what do we do, do, we do in China. Uh, China. This one a Shanghai trip. Eh? Okay, every time we bring about 20 to 30 graduates, huh? okay, up to full house, they will stop already. Okay, you see, we really do renovation, huh? invest in Singapore. We give you MRT map, or you, so you know, you can tell the Chinese which MRT is that. Huh? Okay, oh, real renovation. You see, we even print the Chinese flyers for you. So you just have to staple your name card on it, this become your personal copy. You give away, they contact you because your name card is on it. We even print the Chinese flyers for you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. This one you see, we even do the MBS, no? beautiful backdrop, MBS. People say, what MBS they come in? Okay. We give you tip, chairs and tables, you can sit down and talk to them. Okay. I'll tell you, one trip you go, you can collect 40 to 60 Chinese leads. You come back, you chow bai liao. Don't tell me 40, 60, you cannot close one or two deals. I'm very sure you can. Okay. <coughs> right? Now class, <coughs> let me tell you a joke. Eh? In this trip, this particular trip, eh? We were there. Another agency also went. Eh? They organized for their own agents. You know, there's an agency called E something A. You know which one? Huh? <laughs> okay. E something A. Huh? Uh. So they also organized for the agent. Huh? They, they were there. They organized for the old agent. So the E something A walked past our booth. No? They walked past. Huh? Hey, Singaporean. Eh? So they tried to look for which agency. Eh? No logo. Eh? So they asked, huh? where are you from? Singapore. No? Which agency? Hartens, Orange Tea, Propnex. Huh? Roja. Yeah, Roja. Then who organized for you? They said, David Poe? Who's David Poe? 
Why are they always for you? Well, how much can he take from you? Why he do that for you? You see? Zero, right? Do you say I keep it? I keep my commission at zero, right? No cut, right? They come back. You see, David, you're very good. The E something A told them. Not free, huh? they pay for the own trip there. Not free, one. The company organized for them. 90 10 becomes 70 30. They pay extra 20% more on any deals they close there. <coughs> they come back, they say, My one, no cut, I keep all the chip. Keep all the commission. Now, class, this is what I've done 11 times for our graduates. But please don't expect to, for me to pay your trip. Huh? Because I don't take your commission. <laughs> so you pay for your own trip. Huh? Okay? Now, but anyway, let, uh, let me share the cost with you. Huh? We've done it 11 times, so we know how to bring the cost down very low. I'll tell you what, the, what does the cost include. Huh? Now, the cost will include hotel, one person, one room. Because we know people don't like to share room. So it's one person, one room. Airport transfer. <coughs> transportation. Most of the meals, unless you choose to eat yourself. The renter of the booth, because the, the renter, the booth must rent, right? Huh? So all of you must share the renter. The renovation cost, all of you will share. The printing of flyers, you'll share the cost. We throw in karaoke and all this. Eh? The only thing we don't include is airfare. Why? Last time we include airfare, all fine. To fly to Shanghai, Scoot is only 100 plus. SQ is 600. So some people say Scoot, some people say SQ, so all fine. So now we say airfare, you fly yourself. We meet in Shanghai, full stop. Okay? <clears throat> so airfare to China, Chinese cities is about $100 if you take the budget. Now take away all the airfare. Everything in, including hotel, one person, one room, two dollars. I think it's very reasonable. It's like going for a trip, but once you come back from a trip, you don't just enjoy a holiday, you have 60 leads. Okay? So these are what my graduates will have, what, what, uh, privilege. Huh? Whenever we have a trip, we will call you to come in for a briefing. If you, don't think, if you think you want to go, first come, first serve, you register. <coughs> now, Right, so our five will find Chinese buyers. Okay, so I said we've done it eleven times. <coughs> now networking. <coughs> what do I mean by this? Eighty percent of my deals are close to networking. Only twenty percent through advertisement. <coughs> Means what? If I have a buyer for a factory, I will send to Michael because I know he factory king. He's happy to call with me because he can close fast. Open this thing. He close. We close. I have an office buyer. I'll send to you because I know your office king. We call close. You have a shop house. Uh, you have a buyer for shop house in Chinatown, you send to me because you know I'm Chinatown King. You come, I close book, we all close. Now, it take me five years for me to know he do can he do factory, he do office. It take me five years for him to know I do Chinatown. Because no one introduced. But I'm gonna help you do your networking in one year. How? First, in the first seven days, all the agents come together to learn commercial industry. So, hey, really you wanna do well? You wanna do Canteen work, canteen very fast, oh, canteen very hot, okay. Next time I go buy my canteen and send to you. Uh. Hey, send to me all the office. Uh. Okay. Hey, you do what? Do the factory, okay, send to you factory. So the first seven days you get to know people who do commercial industry. You know who to send to, you know people people know you do what. Then you come back for my weekly training. Every week, you now meet my different batches. Michael, you do zero one one batch, uh. what do you do? You do D1, D2, okay, send to you, uh. you do zero one three batch, uh. what do you do? You do coffee shop, oh you're good, uh. I send to you. Uh. You now meet my other batches, 2010, 2011, 2011, Within one year, your network is ready. You know who to cooperate with or what kind of properties. They also know who, what to send to you, what kind of advice to send to you. Now, class, I'll show you some uh, email later. Many of them use my network and they close deal very fast. They know who to send to, they close deal. I'm going to share you, share with you all this, some, some of them are uh, emails later. Next, access to projects. Huh? I told you right. I will help you. Look up for good commercial <coughs> projects and ask them can train you so that you know how to close other agencies' projects. Okay? Seven, <coughs> coaching. Class, especially if you join a CT, I got up to four trainers for you. Don't tell me you cannot find me because I'm overseas. I got four trainers for you. If you're so urgent, you cannot wait for the weekly training to ask us questions. You need to see us, text us, email us, we will reply you, we will teach you. That's what we do, okay? Now, seven plus one, the bonus day. This one I started just last year. <coughs> I told you I'm gonna share with you a lot of loans method in commercial, right, that you never learned before, one. 
I told you I can even take a loan that my next bank will not know I've taken this loan. It's not possible in residential, but I teach you it's possible in commercial. So I teach people a lot of loans techniques. They now go and teach the buyer all the loan get through already. They're now happy they can close the deal. So they say, David, can you teach us more on loans? I say, no, 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 the, the seven days is not just a loan training. I must teach other things, right? So I said, I cannot just teach on loan. I must teach other things. But because they keep on asking us to teach them more on loan techniques, so they, they can get the loan through, not for the referral, but to close the deal. So okay, last year I agree. I'll throw in one bonus day. <clears throat> last year I threw in one bonus day. That bonus day you come in just to learn nothing except loan standing. I, I teach you now how to push through your loan, how to structure your loans. So whatever loan your buyer has, you teach him how to structure it, he get the loan through, he get the deal through. You don't just make the bank referral, you also make a one or two percent commission. Okay? So I give you one bonus day to train you on loans. Because I remind you again that if you don't get your loans through, your sale is zero. Okay. Now, so now you believe me, eh, class, I don't just conduct a seven days program and bye-bye. Many seven years ago, up to today, they are still in my weekly training. Now, next I'm going to share with you what are the agents that have gone through my program and they become millionaire agents, maybe more than a million dollars a year. Okay, now let me share with you some of them. First, let me share with you, first one is Richard Tan. Ever since he's go through my course, Four years ago, plus minus four years ago, he has made a few million dollars selling shop houses. Every year, close to a million dollar. You add up the last few years, he's now he probably make a, a few million dollar commission selling shop houses after going through our course. Okay, now what happened, Richard? He he's all the while a condo agent. When ABS started, his sales just fell. He bumped into me. He said he's in trouble. I said, Richard, you're so hardworking. You're talented. Come and learn commercial. I said, you'll do well. He came. He graduated. Now I share with you all the email he sent to me for the last few years. Eh? Okay. April 2002. You know, I'm all the while a condo person. Feeling the resistance in RACI, I took your advice and plunged into commercial. I'm so glad to tell you that I closed a $7.5 million shop house. Six months later, December 2002. Hi, David. This is to follow up on my email sent to you earlier in April. I was so happy to share with you in April I've closed a $7.5 million shop house. Now I'm even happier to let you know today I've closed 8.55, 0.99, 0.16, 0 0.1 shop houses. What they told us in the three days program is really effective. Plus you're right, the commercial market is moving. Don't worry about three days, five days. Huh? Now you get seven days. Huh? Now you get the most. I give you seven days now. We are started with three days. Huh? Now, six more months later. <coughs> today, one year into commercial career after a three days program, I already sold 20 old shop houses and 100 over million plus. Okay, now class, he's always the top performer in uh, many months. Uh, many months, he's always the top, top, uh, top performer, uh, Richard. Uh. Okay, let me show you his annual results. Uh. <coughs> okay, for year 2013, after my program, straight away, Richard became number three producer in Promnex. He made close to a million dollar commission selling commercial for the year. He don't do anything as a commercial only. After my course, 2013 for, 2004 is for the year 2013. Yeah. So he made close to a million dollar selling shop house, okay? The next year, for 2004, he become number 11, still not bad. Huh? Uh, but the, the commission dropped to about 600,000. So I asked him, hey, why your commission job? Huh? He's very honest. He said, David, I've gone into recruitment. So he spent a lot of time now training. So less time for sales. But still very good. I'm huh? still selling shop houses, making for the year 2004 about 600,000 commission. <clears throat> then the following year, 2016 is for 2015. Yeah. Okay. He become it's still not bad. Huh? I think now number fourteen, <coughs> okay, close to also close to about six hundred thousand commission, right? Then for two zero one six, he become number seven. He make about a million dollar commission, okay. And last year, last year again he's one of the top uh, around <coughs> thirty plus, okay. He's uh, he still uh, make uh, more than half a million about. And more than uh, more than six hundred thousand, huh? Quite good, like, Close to a million dollars. We still make close to a million dollars last year. So if you tabulate the whole of the last five years, Richard has easily made four to five million dollar commission after our program selling shop houses. Okay, <clears throat> now, and it's not the only one, huh? Now let me share with you some more. Loyal. <coughs> now this was last August fifteen two thousand one seven. Huh? Promax presented all the agents that already crossed the $1 million commission mark 
half a year. If it's half a year last year, already make more than a million dollars, and Luel is one of them. Now, plus, let me share with you a story of Luel. Last, this was August, huh? Last July, he came to my office, he visited me. He came and see me and said thanks to me. He said, thank you for what? David, I want to thank you because I've gone through your course, I've done quite well now. So I asked him, oh, you've done quite well. So how much, how much commission have you done so far? Say like that. 100,000, oh, not bad. Huh? Work harder, huh? 100,000, not bad. Huh? Okay. He said, David, not 100,000. Then I asked, then, ask, then how much? He said, 1 million. Last July, when he came to visit me, visited me in my office to say thanks to me, he already made more than a million dollar commission for half a year. And he's not wrong. Eh? In August, he went up stage to be displayed as a prop next billion age for half a year. Plus, <coughs> he ended up last year, number one producer in Propnex, making making $1.6 million commission. And class, let me show you the emails he sent to me. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, this one, let me show you this one. This one is what he said in the Propnex magazine. Huh? He, this is what he said. Huh? In 2013, I attended a course prepared by David Poe, and he inspired me so much that I decided to attend his commercial real estate for our agents that, that year. I also advised from a proper salesperson, Richard Tan, who was David's uh, course graduate. I know Richard Tan graduated for me. When he came out to do a uh, uh, shop house, I asked Richard to give me advice. And Richard really very nice also gave me advice. So he learned from me, he also learned from Richard. Uh, okay? And the rest is history. Uh, well, okay? Now, of course, uh, he's also always top uh, in many, many months. Uh, and the, the top agent last year, number one producer for $1.6 million. Okay, let me show his email, huh? sorry. Okay. Hi, David. <coughs> Six months after attending a commercial program, I managed my company's top producer, all glory to God. Okay. Now, this one, huh? thanks for your unwavering commitment to empower agents. Since your last email already closed, three shop in East Coast, commission, 79,000 commission. Okay. This one he posts in his uh, Facebook. Huh? I want to thank his boss, huh? and of course myself, who inspired him on commercial. Huh? Okay. Uh, David was my very first mentor on commercial shop house. Because of the extensive rigorous training, I gained the right skill set to excel in a shifted market, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, class, <clears throat> Luel is another one who has made more than a million dollars after attending our course. He does nothing except selling commercial. He only sells commercial. Now, <laughs> more. Okay, let me run away faster now. Huh? Third, Richard Howe. With all the cooling measures imposed on residential, I decided to switch to this segment and started attending David Poe's commercial training. And you know the rest is history. Which is always the, always the top producer for month and for, for yearly producers, always with the top 10 uh, for many years or so. Okay? He has also done very well, of course, making millions in the last few years. Okay, he's always a top producer. So, class, today I can I really show you three. And do you realize they're all from Promex? I'm not sure you those from ERA, Hutton's, Orange T, who go through my course and make millions. I'm not sure you. You know why? Because I can only show you Promnex. Because Isma will give me all this figure. Hutton's will never give me, ERA will never give me. Okay? Uh, so, I only have access to Promnex figures, so I know how much they make. I can only show you Promnex. But I tell you, my graduates are from everywhere. I also have Hutton's, Orange T. <coughs> Whatever they make, after my course they make tons of money, but I just do not know how much they make. Now class, <coughs> so I want to show you many has gone through my class and make a lot of money. You can be one of them. Now let me show you also some many more. Even though the commission may not be a million dollar a year, but they still make tens or hundreds of thousands a year. They are either agents who go through my course and make a lot of money after that, or they are top agent. They still come and attend my course. Only means one thing: my course, the word of mouth spread is very good. So the top agent also come and attend. Okay, these are these are some of our gadgets, ah, huh? Michelle. Okay, uh, this one I plan go away uh, because uh, ever since I show her face, she call me David. Ever since you show my face, uh, people call me to borrow money. She she think I make a uh, she really make a lot of money, huh? Okay, so I close my factory sale four months after attending attending David Post training, ah, uh, the rest is three, uh. Okay, Sachiko, Peng Lee is here today, Veronica, <coughs> Stella, Daniel, Rovina, Stella again, Lillian, Lina, okay, Susan, Alex, Lillian again, Nicole, 
Alex again, Jen, Kevin Fung, Harry, Binder, okay, Stella again, Kevin Fung again, Yolanda, <coughs> Harry, Jen, Jen, Kevin Fung, okay, Paul, Harry, okay, many, yeah, many more, Francis, Rovina, Yolanda, Eve, Doreen, uh, Yan Han, okay, many. Many, many top producer has gone through my program to become top producer or the really top is to come and attend my course. Now, <laughs> let me show you more emails, more emails from other agencies, eh? okay? Uh, from from uh, uh, batches of other agencies, okay? I'm writing to this email to say thank you for the lesson which took on this batch. Eh? Within three days, he closed his first industrial deal. Many things I teach you can straight away apply one. They can straight away can close the one, eh? Okay, this one also, eh? uh, Hi, good morning, David. Uh, after attending your January batch, eh? he managed to close a a, a new launch, huh? okay? Like, and even though you are a newbie, uh, you have not even started doing sales, don't worry about this. I assure you, you will not be confused. Huh? My training is made very simple for everyone to understand. You see, <coughs> this lady said, for a newbie like me, this is a good intro to the real estate industry. Yeah? Okay, more. Okay, this lady say, she always sign up for this free workshop. This four hours free, yeah? Because it's free, sign up always never come. Finally, she came. She said she should come earlier. I have signed up for this four hour training each time but I couldn't turn up. Finally, I managed to attend this training and I regret not coming earlier. Indeed, halfway through, she didn't wait for me to finish the program. Halfway through, she went up to sign up, she went up to sign up for the three to seven days program. She said, this is what I want. I want to do commercial. She went up to sign up with it. Okay, now, this gentleman say, through the three tedious day, you provided us with a great deal of helpful information and a whole lot of personal experiences, all of which I believe have and will benefit us tremendously. Okay. This one says, basically, I personally feel it's engaging, motivating, listen to your teaching. I've learned a lot of things in that three days. Okay. Now, this lady attended two trainers, two training on commercial agents. One is conducted by me, one is conducted by another trainer. She said, I was so much better. Yes, she texts Peter. You as, yes, you and David are really good. Huh? We really learned so much. Thank you, Frank. You were so much better than the other trainer. I broke up the name, not very good. Huh? The other trainer was so much better than him. I went for his course last year. Okay. Now, Linda say, my course is very useful. I've done so many courses myself. I can say it's the best course. The contents are clear and easy to understand. On a scale of 10, I will give it a big 10. <coughs> okay. Now, I don't just train 90, uh, I don't just train 90 agents like you. I train also developers team. Now, I train a lot of Far East salespeople. Uh. Okay. Far East, uh. John Wong, he's still there. He's, yeah, he's a sales manager. He's still there. Okay. <coughs> he was a top sales in Far East almost every year selling residential. Top sales, uh. Problem came in 2013, the boss said, now you go and sell commercial. He said, I know nuts about commercial. But never mind, he came to attend my three days program. After that, he managed to be number one in five selling commercial again. So I trained a lot of com developers team. I don't just train 90 agents. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> now, this is my eldest in my class, 75 years old. She don't type computer, so she scribble. I asked my staff to type it out and let her sign. So she signed. With all the knowledge gained and renewed confidence, I succeeded in selling three offices and three factory. A 75 years old selling six properties after my program. Can I know in this class who is elder than 75 years old? Don't have, huh? So you all must sell more than six after my program. I'm quite sure you all can, huh? Because you're younger than 75 years old, huh? Okay. Now, to my mentor, David and Peter, after I attended a program, he went aggressive, aggressively into the commercial. She, she uh, sold four properties, 100,000 commission, huh? Okay. You see, let's say she. Learn these five things from us. Let me repeat the last two. She's a mother of four, always not enough time for her daughters. Now she said she spent weekends and night time at home. The benefit of working on the weekday starts having a more meaningful and fruitful family life than the weekends. Last but, and, uh, last but not least, the ability to explain God's guidance and provision closing a deal for a $5 million shop house. <clears throat> okay, she closed a $5 million deal after the program. Okay, a brand new agent. Never expect a big deal, 3.2 million will come so fast, so soon. Eh? I just collected commission to book the $3.2 million shop. Eh? I uh, just closed without you, this deal is not possible. Uh. I could not imagine a new agent without experience like me could conclude such a big deal so fast, so soon. Okay, this one, husband and wife team selling bungalow. I say you swing the bungalow buyer to buy shop house. Bungalow is 10 million, shop house is 10 million, just swing. Uh. She swung and then she closed. Uh. We are pleased to inform you that we sold a $30 million commercial property. Uh, can't close without your help. Okay, now, this, okay, let me skip some a lot. Uh. Okay, okay, now, this is, from Bingley, Bingley, she's, she's here today. Eh? One year after he graduated from a seven days program, we are still helping him. He thinks we are real, we really help people, not just after seven days, we say bye bye. So he wrote this to us. 
Hi David, Peter and Peter, it's been almost a year since I attended your commercial program. I'm writing to express my thanks to you guys who are always so energetic and eager to help. More, this gentleman also, after my program, she's very touched. Huh? Hi David, even after I graduated from your program, you still give me advices and guide me in my career. So I'm real, I really want to help you even after the seven days. Now, not just sale, renter can be very good also. Huh? Just right, want to write a thank you note for the precious thing I learned to your classes. I just closed the rental deal, 100,000. Uh, uh, also, okay, praise and glory to the name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. More. Okay, this lady after my program, she closed four properties, huh? Okay, and she said, huh, the network alone has helped her close 165,000 commissions in six months. She swing here, swing there. You do factory, I swing to you. You do office, I swing to you. She swing here, swing there. You see the network, she closed 100,000 commission. Okay. More. This one also using my our network, huh? Although I've not acquired any knowledge in commercial but through your network of investors, I closed a 4.2 million office. Huh? These two came for my training, sit together, and they closed deal. Huh? Okay. Uh, during the last month, they post training. I have an agent from this agency. He's a buyer to buy residential. We swing them to buy, swing to buy industrial, and they close the deal. Okay. Now, class, this is my best testimonial. Okay. Everywhere we go. <coughs> I still pack my class. After seven years, I still pack my class. It only says one thing. Honestly, let me tell you, most of my competitors has closed down. I've seen many in the last seven years. I honestly tell you, uh, many of my graduate, after learning from me, they also going to set up their own commercial program. But they're all closed down. Okay, I'm the last one stand, stand not laughing, uh, but stand, stand <laughs> teaching, uh, stand teaching, uh, okay. So, it only means one thing, the word of mouth spread must be good. After seven years, if it's no good, people say, don't believe in him, no one will come. But you know the word of mouth spread is, go la, I learned something, my friend be, he will make a million dollars after his attending his beautiful swing. So you know the word of mouth spread is good. La. Okay. Now, this couple, they said, thanks Peter and David, your sharing is going to be life changing for us. Many skills I share in the seven days are not just for your commercial sales, you can apply them also in residential sales. Plus, many are life-changing skills, I assure you of this. It's going to be life-changing for you too. Eh? Okay, now, it is not just a training course, it's a lifelong learning. Many has been, I still inside my free training for the last six to seven years. Eh?